told everybody we wanted a $25,000 offer. Everybody understood with the $25,000 offer we were going to get the canned report with the dollars and some stuff like that. So you came back with a lot of comments about the report and whether you know we need national data or state data and stuff like that. I think the honest answer is they didn't refine it that well. Th th they weren't even trying and they weren't under that impression. So I think everybody needs to be aware of that. And I don't want that. Okay, so, yeah, so I, I, I asked why they wanted that. And, and, and I don't think we need it. Was a can and it was a canned report. So I used to yeah, okay. want to be honest. And then here, here is what I want to say. Steve, as I had said earlier, is an expert in this area. Everybody had made that clear. Um, Brian Kinsel in this area is clueless. Um, you know, I'll be happy to talk strategic planning with Nicole. <laughs> but I, I volunteered to um, be the lead on this because I think the vote was six to one. Um, so, I, so I'm doing it. Somebody else wants to step up and be the board liaison, great. At the end of the day, Steve is running this project. Um, I've told Steve that, and I'm saying it with perfect clarity now. He's got the background. He's got the expertise. I'm saying it because uh, Joe's here. I think it's a great time. I'm expecting Suzanne. I'm expecting Todd. I'm expecting um, Tony, JR, and all the other people to step up their game for a period of two or three months because Steve is going to run with this. He's going to make it happen. What needs to happen from a board perspective is that we need to be the public support for this so that the surveys, the, the, we, the town meetings and everything have our support. But, we actually have a 10 o'clock call tomorrow with um, WIT to talk about the project more. We will refine it. Like, we didn't even know the name back then was the Parks and Facilities Master Plan, which is why it says recreation as an example and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I really wanted to just kind of clear the air rather than trade 10,000 emails. That's the reason you got what you got. Steve is the point person. We support him on that. And right now I'm the board person. If someone else wants it or is better, God bless you, you can have it. <laughs> Fair enough, open it up for conversation or anything you want to add. Well, just I'll add to that. Um, the meeting tomorrow is to talk about scheduling the kickoff meeting and scheduling the uh, public meeting with the community. During that public meeting, that's going to be a key meeting because they're going to go over nomenclature and um, getting everybody on the same page when we talk about what a community center looks like versus what a gymnasium or an art center or a, so they'll, they'll go over so that there's a clear understanding of when you're asking or showing what your needs are for the community, you know exactly what you're asking for. Um, and then um, the comments that were, uh, Brian, you had mentioned about, um, I completely lost my mind, sorry, Monday morning, but you had mentioned early on about um, some comments that Mr. Anderson made in the report about the oh, state and, and national um, trends. The trends analysis is just a, a standard part of um, facilities master planning. So I think that we can determine um, what we're, and a lot of this is going to be in a conversation with Nicole this morning too, but we can determine what, who and what we want to benchmark against. If we want to benchmark against other um, similar HOAs or similar municipalities that are about the same size, that's completely up to us to determine how we want to move that forward. But ultimately, your roles are going to be to share what you feel the needs are of the community and then you're going to think at a very high level as the ultimate stakeholders that are going to approve the dollar amounts that are going to be spent on all these projects as they move forward. So you will have a role to play, an important role to play. It will all be scheduled with that process. Yeah. And you agree. You're the point person running. I'll be the point person. I'll schedule everything with them. I'll just bounce things off of Brian every now and then. He'll be part of the conversation, um, but I'll move it forward. As, as a working model, I, I'd like to see the board try to, to keep our fingers out of this in detail. I think the questions that have been asked would be great questions if we were actually the ones doing the study and survey ourselves. I think we're better, because we're the final <coughs> decision makers on what actually gets spent, it seems to me that we're better off being impartial listeners who do as much as we can to attend these events, listen to people. Uh, we all, you know, I, I'm sure it happens to all of us, we get stopped any place we are in town or any event we're in in town and we're lobbied for particular projects or interests that groups or individuals <coughs> might have. I think if there's a perception that we're actually driving the study itself, if we are managing the study, that somehow we're putting our thumb on the scale. And I want to be very careful that when the study is done, that we're able to look at it and say, well, we agree with this part of it. We don't agree so much with this. We've heard this. And <coughs> we have that ability to have a clear, impartial dis discussion. So. I guess that would just be my preference. Right. 
Well, and, and Jackson, that's a good point. I think we need to remember that when we look at the input from the 2010 study, that unfortunately that was driven by the board and that survey was driven um, right. by the board and, and a lot of the outcome which we've said we will bring forward, I think you need to really take a careful look at that and realize that that was um, board driven and controlled by a smaller group and to be cautious with that. And I, I do think looking at the county might be important though. For example, we're building the fields and then we find out that the county is building a lot of fields in that area. If we look at a project uh, and have a duplication that's nearby, just at least for the county, take a look at it. And, and the big reason why you're spending these dollars to use an outside firm and not just have us drive it internally is so that you have that um, unbiased, uh, someone from the outside that will really let this be a community <coughs> needs assessment driven facilities master plan. And the data will show you what the community wants. And it's probably a lot of what we've already heard, but this is a good process to go through for us to have that all kind of rise to the top. David had brought up st statistically valid sampling and some more definition and thought around that. It might be good to have David talk to the right people on the other side there. Yep. I okay. think there could be some. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it struck me they were using terms, I mean, because they emphasized it three times. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not sure that they know what they're saying. And they're hiring somebody else. they're hiring somebody, so it would be good yeah. to have you talk to yeah. the right person. To me, the largest question, and this is not driving the survey, it's driving the plot, helping to drive the process okay. to make sure it's as inclusive as possible so that a year from now and three years from now, residents say, yes, it was a good process, it was neutrally driven, it was managed by the outside, but it was very inclusive. We trust it. That's what I would want. And that's where a lot of my picky piece were. And, and some of those points also were uh, things that for them to make sure that th it's on their radar screen, that we've done some work before and include that. So yeah. we, are, we are an uncommon community, I believe. Yeah, and, and it's important, I think, as we um, gear up for, for marketing this and pushing this out to the Absolutely. In, in January that we are stressing that now is your time to have your voice heard to tell us what the needs are for this community for our creation because this is really setting you up for the next five to ten years of how you're going to spend those capital dollars. Exactly. So it's hard to come back five years in and say, well, why aren't we building this? Yeah. And, as, and yeah. as the board president, you'll probably be the kickoff speaker when we actually have the town hall meeting That's anyway. Fine. So you <laughs> will be able to wrap it up. I think, I, I think <laughs> I'm free that day. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think Debbie's point is it's also good. We want to listen to the prior reviews that were done, assessments that were done, but in context. Because if it was a faulty process, don't just trust the data, don't just trust the results. Or, or not a faulty process, a, um, maybe some biases maybe, in the process. Maybe incomplete more or than incomplete. Because it was, it was an, an initiative to try and determine how you wanted to spend your dollars. Which was good. And you hired a third party. Um, and an architect to kind of design things out of how it should look, but this really is a planning yeah. firm. Yeah. So it was a limited process in the past, right. and and now we're trying to be more. Right. And th this planning firm thinking. specializes in um, in facility master planning. Right. Yeah. And I guess the other large point is as we look at this and we communicate to our community, uh, it's we have the community center front and center, and I know you've noted that. Um, and whatever that means, whatever that means, is it just, is it, what does the community need? Is it gathering points? Is it pottery studios? Is it, I, I just define what that means. All right. Yeah, and I think as they work through the process, all this stuff will, will start unveiling itself. And, and these are all questions that Brian and I asked as we were vetting through Good. the four different Good. vendors. So we'll see it as the process starts Good. coming about next year. Oh, and, and it'll be, give us some rich results. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, I think the survey part is obviously so important. And if we have a person that's an expert in this, I think he should be involved in that because, I mean, that's, he's got a doctorate in that area. So. Sure. And, and I think it's important that we encourage future boards from this day forward to remember that you took an initiative to strategically look out into the future, the next five to ten years, and sometimes it's easy to let the noise distract us from the focus, but we have to stay focused. Absolutely. Good point. We're ready to move on? You okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. A condo Association Liaison Initiatives, anything to um, share? <coughs> I had asked at a previous meeting that we create a resolution to set that up, can you update us? Can you track well, that? okay. Um, I will tell you that we as management can't create that resolution. Um, so you can I'm draft it. 
Par right. Well, I need your input in order to be able oh. to draft it. So That's perhaps you and I can schedule a meeting together. Fine, fine. You want me to draft it. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> well, I want you to give me the information, <laughs> your <laughs> idea of what the goals are, that kind of thing. Okay, so yeah. you guys better go to that meeting. Well, then we, we, we get those finalized through the attorney because it is right. um, either the board of, or legal, right? And if it's management writing it, that is... Okay, I got that. Okay. What's the need of a, of a resolution? Is there something we can accomplish without it? It is, but it formalizes the process. So what are we one looking to do in this resolution? Um, my thought would be that we are establishing a uh, an ongoing condominium advisory uh, committee uh, that would meet on a regular basis uh, to discuss issues of importance to condominiums and mm -hmm. then is this uh, going to be a standing committee you're talking about? Yeah, like we would have recreation committee or dog park committee or something else. I mean, <coughs> I think for 35, 38 percent of our residents who are in mm -hmm. condos, we need to have some more formalized way of, of communicating. I think it also gives us a little more leverage, Vaughn, uh, when we go to the condominiums that aren't communicating with us and say, look, here it is. This is now an established regular group. It meets all the time. It came up. Uh, to me over the weekend that Artisan Park Club held their candidate forum for their board of directors. And a question was asked about were they going to attend any of the condominium meetings? And two of the current directors said, we don't know anything about any meetings. We've never heard about any meetings. So you know, I think that the more we can formalize and put the imprint in, then it's just an established piece. So mm. that's all I wanted to do. Are we, are we going to develop a resolution for the technology committee? And all of your committees have resolutions. Yes. Okay. Well I thought the technology had been drafted. It okay. has. It Perhaps has been on. Push back on that just to move mm -hmm. some of those things you into mass. Yeah. Into yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we'll, I want to raise that to the well, I, I think so one of the work. items are when we look at so writing the goals and the objectives for what this condo group is going to be doing, we have to make sure that it's written clear enough to show that the code board's not setting policy for individual Correct. condo associations. You're, you're doing this more of a bottom-up information for the condo associations to feed um, anything that's happening in the condos, anything that they want CROA to take a look at from a bigger picture. It's, and, and so the condo associations understand this. It's not for CROA to impose your will on them on what Which is why you need a resolution that Correct. lays yeah. it out. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Can you, since, since Rick is here, why don't you give us 30 seconds on Comcast? Yeah. The <coughs> Well, you want to start? <laughs> sure. Um, we received an email from the, uh, one of the former board members of the terraces um, the, on Waterside, and uh, it was that Comcast had reached an agreement with Smart City to extend their um, use of the line for 60 days. So I've reached out to um, Marty Rubin with uh, Smart City, and I've reached out to Jackie with Comcast to ask for clarification on that, because I want to make sure what we're communicating is correct. And I've gotten no response back from either one of them. Um, there was another representative from Smart City that jumped in and said, hey, how can I help you? <coughs> so I emailed him and asked him for a little bit more clarification. I, I haven't heard anything back. So this week I will push some more to see if I can get some more information. And then once we know what it is, we're, we're more than willing to communicate it through Friday Flash or whatever <laughs> mediums that we have. But we want to make sure we're putting the right information out. And we've heard lots of stories about what Comcast is or isn't doing. We want to make sure we're giving the right story. Our, our presumption, and it is just a presumption, it's not grounded in fact, but our presumption is that the attorneys for Smart City and Comcast are trying to work out the deal and we're in that sort of blackout time when you've got two big companies trying to figure something out and we have the broad outlines of that agreement but we don't know the details and so they're all just going into radio silence. My, sus my suspicion is <coughs> that if they do go to this end of February as an interim point, that the offers that were made previously, that uh, Rick had negotiated, for example, <coughs> with Smart City, that those agreements, those deadlines would be pushed back because now we're no longer looking at a January 1 deadline to cut the lines. So we just don't, part of the concern that I've got is there's so much bad information out there, uh, in part because Comcast isn't being very forthcoming. But I don't want us to pile on with more bad information, because I think if we do that, we just muddy the waters, we make it harder for everybody else. The bottom line still is that each condominium association needs to decide if they want to go with Comcast, if so, under what terms and conditions, and when. 
the best thing that we can do as a CROA board is continue to apply pressure to Comcast and to Smart City to find some interim agreement so that people have enough time to make their decisions. I've seen Comcast trucks all over town in, in individual home driveways where it's obvious that people have suddenly gone and go, whoa, mm -hmm. I'm not going to have right. uh, service after a certain date. So I know that our information is having an impact in that world, and I know that some of the, c the condominiums are making progress, some may not, and some we just don't know. Well, and just to add to that, I did speak with Comcast prior to this, where, and this was a, um, my last report, I believe, to the Pro Board. Um, they, they did tell me that they were working with Smart City, and if they came to a deal, they would notify us, but they also were very clear that they were not negotiating anymore with the condo staff. If they were going to do a deal, the deal would have to be signed as soon as possible so that they could get mobilized to start the construction. So it doesn't sound like they're going to go back and forth on, t on years of the term or whether you can do bulk agreements or not. It sounds like they're, they're pretty much digging their heels in saying this is, this is the way that the deal looks. If you want it, this is kind of your last chance. And I think if we get the detail, if we get the confirmation, then I think it's safe for us to go to the Friday Flash and say here's what we know as a fact. We're not advocating that anyone do anything one way or the other. I think the, the question was raised when we put in the notice about Jennifer Ketchum from Comcast coming here every Friday, is that advertising for Comcast? My view is it's not. It's just an information piece. She is here. It was part of our agreement with Comcast that we made to create a, an opportunity for them to answer customer questions. And you know that's all we're doing. We're not saying buy Comcast. Don't buy Comcast. It's good or it's bad. OK. Let's roll forward. OK. Yeah. So before the Comcast part, there will be the beginnings of a draft resolution. Yeah, is that a, that. That, so that's a, okay. Can you get on tape? Right. I can hear the question. Can come up I, I think Jackson raises uh, an interesting point, and, and I was really the one that, that asked the question: What is advertising, and what isn't? If if it's not if it's advertising to say that the Comcast representative is going to be here at CROA uh, on site, is it, is it wrong then to also say, hey, Smart City has extended its offer to condominiums, which expired on November the 30th, that, Com or that Smart City has extended that offer for at least up until December 15th, so the condominiums that are, that are losing internet through uh, because of Comcast have the opportunity still to take advantage of the offer that Smart City made, which was to, you know, you know, sign up now, we'll give you a month free, and you know, you can go forward and not lose internet service. So I asked that, that Smart City's offer to condominium people that were losing their their that are losing their in, internet had that information. W what we found was that trying to communicate uh, I've tried to use Steve Waring's um, uh, email list of condominium <coughs> people. It goes nowhere. Most of the addresses come back as undeliverable. So my effort was to get information out in front of the community that the offer had been extended. Mm -hmm. Th this does not involve Mirasol at all. Right. Uh, I, I'm the, the president at Mirasol. Mirasol is doing its own thing. We have made our own deal with Smart City. It has nothing to do with that. My, my request was only to get information out in front of right. a lot of people that are not getting the information any other exactly. way. Exactly. Well, I think it makes perfect sense. Yeah. So part of, part of that, Steve, is once you get clarification, that sort of information can go forward. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's, what you're, trying to, that's what you're trying to do. Ask them to just verify if I this is real. And I can always work it towards not their promo codes and everything right. else. We can just say, and the right. deadline has now been extended to this date. If you want more information, either come see Jennifer Ketchen or go to Smart City's website. Go to Smart City, right. Okay, ready to move to the next item? I am, yes. A agreement with Osceola County. You'll see that that's new, a new label. As I was corrected at the CDD meeting when I reported a week or two ago, it's not interlocal agreement, it's agreement. And the documents that we've had prepared by the county says agreement. Sure, and an interlocal agreement is just a government to government. And we're not government. Since we're not so, government now. So, so the, um, we've all seen the agreement, we've talked about it, it's gone to the attorney, we've made red line versions. That has been among those of us in this room. The next step is meeting with Beth Ann Knight tomorrow, Beth Knight, 
um, at the uh, de deputy county administrator. Deputy county manager. Manager for Osceola County. We meet with her tomorrow afternoon at 2. Uh, we'll be sharing the red line with her at that time. She has not yet seen it. We don't expect anything earth shattering from their point of view. So then the question is, then what? She will probably necessarily send it to her, uh, to their attorney, uh, but she may look at it. We expect that she would look at it and say, looks good. Yeah, I want to address one question that was raised about whether or not we should send this to the CCDD attorney. I strongly disagree with doing that. Um, this is not an interlocal agreement. The CCDD does not okay. have a role to play in this. Uh, we should not be engaging them and slowing us down that way. Yeah. Um, Agreed. This is no slight on his ability. He's a great attorney, but we've got a very strong, capable, competent attorney, yeah. and I'm comfortable with the work he's done. No, absolutely. That was only like, do we need another set of eyes? It's a, it's a huge step. It's a very, um, it's a big change for the community. Yeah. Do we need someone that, because the Osceola County is a government. I know we're not. What it I think we need is a government uh, piece, and it was not particularly CCDD, it was like, do we need an, a, another government attorney to look at that? It was just something I threw out, and that's fine, I get it. Um, I just, I think it's something we need to um, not rush through. As you said, you know, one of what you guys really ran on was transparency and communication with the community, and I don't know that they're aware yet that we're doing this, so I think we need to look at that piece. You don't know who's aware of what. It's been going on the board, but, you know, unless they're watching the minutes or they're here, this has been discussed for over a year. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's been discussed. It's been in, it's been in our yeah. board up, monthly updates. If I, if I may, yeah. what I would recommend is that once you have the meeting tomorrow, you and Steve, if they say this looks materially okay with us, we just got to get a final lawyer sign off, I think we ought to put it in the Friday flash. I think we ought to put the whole document in there. I think it would be wise to say that the Quilla board as a whole supports it. If anybody doesn't support it, now it's time to speak your piece. Because we'll, and then we take, I think we have to take a, a board meeting, and I think we take the December board meeting and say we're going to, we'll take all comments regarding it. Some people are going to hate it, some people are going to love it. You know, if there's 20 people who hate it, but the majority of the feedback we get, then we could say we're, you know, $2.1 million is real. T timing, I'd love to hear what you finally get for an answer there. But this gets us $2.1 million. We need, I think, in the cover, which I th assume would come from David and Steve could help with it, you know, that this is really consistent with what exists today anyway. Here's the agreement. We welcome mm -hmm. any feedback. But we would move to adopt this in January. And even if we have to call a special board meeting just to adopt this one item or something like that, I think we do it then to get our money. But I think we put it out to the public so there's nothing, quote, hidden. And we say that we support it as a board. Well, is that fair? On the review, too. I agree with Jackson. I think on the review, you don't want to have two different attorneys looking at the same document. Um, they're, they're not working together. Uh, I think we send it to Tom, and Tom looks at it. If Tom feels he wants to share it with with CDD's attorney, then let him do it. But I don't think that's our place to be getting advice from two different lawyers. Um, one does not re represent us, one does. So I would go that route. I agree. Yeah, Tom has looked at it, I think, two weeks ago. I mean, I think Tom's done. And the version that we'll be taking back to um, the county tomorrow will be Tom's revision with all of your comments right. included in that. So then, just following up, I think, assuming that it's materially accepted by the county tomorrow, sharing it publicly with the residents, with the, uh, our finalized version, they don't need to see the, unless you disagree, they don't need to see, see the redlining and stuff. Mm -hmm. They can see the finalized version. Here's what we are signing off on. And then, again, on your point, is 100% of the board supporting this? As written? Yes. 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 Is yes. anyone not supporting it as written? I still have some questions, but it's not a not support. I just still okay. have some questions. Okay. So we we generally we overall we, does, yes. overall we support overall we support is that? Yep. So I would draft something. Um, I don't mean I still have some concerns on it. I would draft like something for months. the Friday flash. It would probably be this Friday flash, unless you want a special Friday flash for this. It's, it's a big deal. It's, it is a big deal. So it's maybe it's, is it worthy of a, a special Friday flash, not on Friday? Question. I mean, you can still say Friday and separate it out. I don't know. Or don't bury it. Make sure it's not like, you know, the last thing in there. 
Just I'm, put it in I'm perfect. Perfect. For $2.1 million, I am perfectly happy having a special email communication. And I would, I'll share that draft with you. Now, for any changes from, from, yep. from the best office, I understand. I think it needs to go back to Tom before Absolutely. it goes into the flash. Yes. Ab Absolutely. If there's something that is materially. Some, some material, not some, some technical, you know, a no, 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 no. comma or something, but I think. Changing the priorities or changing dollar amounts or. So if we can get it to where both parties are, are pretty much in agreement with it, then we'll post it. Until yes. then, we'll hold it back. And, yes. and David's the liaison from the board, so I'll, um, it'll be vetted to where um, David says, yes, I think both parties are now on the same page and we're yeah. ready to post Steve, question for you. How many people do we have email addresses for for a Friday Flash? 3,000. Oh, right. Can we break it out with people we don't know as far as email addresses and send a separate letter to them? Um, as a separate mailing? Yeah. We could. There's going to be an expense involved with the mailing. I think it's probably around three thousand dollars for a mailing of that size. That's yeah. for a mailing. Yeah, I'm just saying, mailing, mailing to the people who don't have email addresses are not going to receive it. The Friday Flash. Oh. The mailing to the that residents who don't that subscribe to Friday Flash. That would be tough because they'd have to go through and compare who doesn't have an email with the address. Well, it'd be on the website too. We can we can make sure it's prominent on the website, and we can make sure it's um, we're pushing back through Friday okay. Flash, and we can do a cell service also to to push that. Well, if you think you've reached everybody adequately, that's fine. Well, I think this goes back to that philosophical question of if the water's there, you know, the horses have to come drink it. So we have six different places of water yeah. here in the community. So All of our meetings, multiple meetings. Will this? Will we address this in the newsletter? For I January? January? We certainly can. We, we um, should. If we we know should. That there's a meeting or we, something. We, I, I have a draft. I'll see. Okay. Let's, let's over communicate it, and then yeah. people have seen it. For two point one million dollars, it's worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you all don't mind, I'd like to give you a quick update of some construction because we did get some exciting news last Wednesday. Uh, they're about a month ahead now on the synthetic turf field. Uh, so if you look up on the screen, you can see this line right here, just so you can kind of understand what's going on with the construction. Over here on this side, the right side, there's a big trench and they're putting in all the stormwater pipes. This is dewatering it. So this hose here is dumping all the water over here. So you can see it all coming out. This is some of that muck that you approved to be removed from back here and spread. You can see it's still being portioned out and spread. And then we'll go with some technology. If you get motion sickness, close your eyes, because we're going to fly a little bit. <laughs> so you can see we're flying up to, this is field one and two here. Um, that will be divided by nets. This will be the sidewalk that runs all the way across <laughs> here. And then we get back here, and we see people walking the um, border that they're putting in, the, the footer for the athletic field, or for the synthetic turf field. Is that you, Jack? <laughs> no, no, I... <laughs> oh, you're up in the drone? He's tied out there to fly the drone. Well, so Todd, is that our drone? Uh, yes, sir. This is the Thank footer you. that's Thank going in right here. You can see there's a little breakout here that takes it all the way to where the pavilion's going to be located. And then they have all the rock that's out here now. So this is the first base of the drainage. And then the rest of the drainage will start being um, put in throughout the next week or so. By Christmas, by December 25th, we should see carpet on the ground with our beautiful celebration logo right here in the middle of the field. Where's the building going to go up there? Uh, the building goes all the way back where we're sitting. Okay, so gotcha. to, this okay. would be if we were to fly back out. So Steve, can you show on that if you back up into where any of the parking's going to be? Uh, I don't think we got a full picture of where the parking because it doesn't start until we're already pretty far into it but the parking and the right building are all up here is they're on this side so, you're walk so this is where field one and field two so will between be two and three right. Right. but, but if you go out there now everything's kind of already sectioned off for what it's going to be um, and they're doing all the leveling for it when's your next scheduled walkthrough um, it's a week from wednesday the field 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 concession parking so december 12th will be the next one so as you can see, it's moving along. It's um, on schedule for pretty much everything, a little bit ahead of schedule for the synthetic turf fields. And Onco, the general contractor, they're very pleased that this is going in as quickly as it is because it gets them done and out of the way and they can finish the rest of the projects. Yeah, because this gets turned over to another company, isn't it? The to do right that's right the field. 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 out there right it's now. Right now. The field. Right there right now. Yeah. Good. So that's that. I just want to show off the cool 
fire. <laughs> Steve, in the back at the, tri at the triangle where we're talking about a boardwalk, yes. what is that area going to be turned into? So right now it's, it's nothing um, other than it will just be this cleared out and really sodded. But there is a possibility in the future back here for, um, you see this is where the sidewalk is going to go all the way through with the turnaround here. Right. But there's a possibility for another pavilion here. And then we had um, a youth, uh, a uh, tot lot in a larger size playground here and then some exercise stations along here. Uh, the county has expressed interest in doing like a, a technology type playground yeah. and having, <coughs> excuse me, some dollars available for that also. So that's an opportunity for us to, con to continue to explore. They've also talked a little bit about um, having some trail dollars that will be available. So if we want to be advocates for this with the development district and talk to them about working on uh, putting the connector into North Village, this is an excellent opportunity for that. Tomorrow. <laughs> you guys have to wait a little bit no, on this one. Okay. Well, it's their project on our land. Yeah. But we'll give that to them if they want to so put it in and maintain it. <laughs> we even ran the electric for them, so. That's good. Yeah, the electric's going all the way out to that far pavilion, so it just need, would need an extender. And there was some conversation last Wednesday about whether it would need to be punched through the wall. And our engineer, Mark, has said no, it could probably be worked around the wall. So we chose at that meeting not to take on any additional expenses at this point in time to just leave it stopping at that last pavilion, that last future pavilion, not the one that we're actually building. So going back to the agreement with the county, uh, assume that we're all on board. We don't need any more attorney review on our end. Um, we would do a notice to our community through Friday Flash and website. What would be the timing for a vote? Would we have a special meeting? Do we want to wait till the new year, wait till our January meeting? Might we fit it in our December meeting, which is two nights from tonight? If everything works perfect that's a tomorrow, that's a qu then these are questions. Two weeks. Yeah, if everything works two perfectly weeks from tonight. tomorrow, we'll, we'll push to have it in for the December 7th. Do you want it on the December meeting? Are we ready to go? Because we, we've, we've had to months and months we want to give the money in our bank. You can get it. If yep. the first it's payment is going to be on January 1, we've got to approve it in two weeks. I mean, you'll get that feedback tomorrow. If they say February 15th, then we, then we've heard all along the money's in the bank. Right. So it's, it's, it's I'm very heavily, I'm very heavily of the opinion that when the money's in our bank account, it's not in theirs. <laughs> so, it's, 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 so if they, if they, if they're ready for January 1, I say put it on the agenda December 15th or whatever that date is. Does everybody agree? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, Jack, you. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> anything else on that? We'll give you an update as soon as we have it. We also know that tomorrow at 3 is a CDD meeting. It, it's, it's a meeting. It's, it's a meeting at a workshop time. So, yeah. But it's a meeting. I'll be there. I'm excited. It's just, I'll be there late. I, I think, I assume I'll be late. I don't think we'll be finished with Beth in, five, in, t in 30 minutes. But anyway, um, I'll be there when I can. You're going to have new board members seated and... Uh, the new board members were seated yeah. I mean, they'll they'll be seated for this meeting and... Uh, yeah. yeah, Paul was there at the last meeting. We'll see what goes first. on. So I don't know what the agenda is. Has it been posted? Haven't seen it posted. It, it was posted, it was it was but it was vague. <laughs> it was a lot. It was two pages and it, it told you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, next item on the agenda, Celebration 25 follow-up. Um, in our last discussion, we decided we would have a resolution. I drafted it. You have seen it. I've updated it. Thank you, Vaughn. Uh, so I've updated it, and I, I should tell you that Gloria has seen this and says, looks good. So that's an important sign-off, verbal, no, email verbal. Um, I would only make one change to what I've written, and that's that um, I feel that at the very end where I said up to two members are the designees, because uh, that includes board or staff or appointees by the board. I'm thinking it should be three for Crowell, but that's just last thought. So rather than equal partners, it's... My uh, question is, since, CC, yeah. since CCDD and Canoa are both listed as being part of this committee, do we have to get them to sign off on the resolution too, or otherwise they can come back and say, you created something, you've included this, and you didn't even ask our opinion? That was the only question I had. Or maybe there's a way of saying um, invited. Well, you, you can set a resolution and uh, um, allow what members you'd like to allow from your resolution, but 
probably want to ask them if they want to be part of it. And then tomorrow's meeting may be a good opportunity for your board liaison to ask, to, to bring this up and ask them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that you? <laughs> so what are your thoughts? What are your I'll thoughts? Ask them tomorrow. Ask them tomorrow. And the same with Kanoa. You're, you're also tied into Kanoa. Um, I'm usually the Kanoa representative. So uh, you, could, you could be a Kanoa representative. I could be. Um, or if you would like to ask TCC to, to have one of their representatives, that would, or, or one of the other two Kanoa members. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it looks good. I think it's, I think it's very important. Do you think it, excuse me. No, I mean, I think it's, it's very important. I think it's just uh, another opportunity to have the community work together, and it's always been our goal. Do you feel that Corolla should have three or not? Or does it? I mean, we could have also call members, or in other words, someone ne necessarily on the board, but someone either on the board or just right. a community member. Right. So I'm just thinking, Quilla has a, if you will, a disproportionate, I mean, it's in a good way, disproportionate interest in this. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see three members. Okay. <coughs> With your permission, I will reword that. Um, we'll see um, Canola, and then Vaughn, just seek. Seated. Mm -hmm. um, Wednesday after. I'll send you a revised version this afternoon. I'll send everyone a revised version this afternoon. You can share it as appropriate. After we get clarification, final comments Wednesday, we can send this to uh, the attorney just for one last look over and sign off on it. I don't think he's looked at this. Not yet. No, we're waiting to hear your everyone's feedback, and then if there's anything. If this is okay. Sure. I mean, it was interesting writing whereas statements. <laughs> 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 Uh, and then could we vote on this at our December meeting, time-wise? Board book is due, yeah, so you finalize this I'll Wednesday? I'll finalize this Friday. It'll be put together next week, so you'll get it Thursday afternoon before This the Thursday the afternoon. 17th. Okay. No, this not this Thursday, next Thursday. Thursday. Just so that you all know for, okay, next for, that's the, right. for our internal process to put this together, our department head due date is today to have this in. So when you right, so this place today is usually past our deadline. Not meaning that we won't do it, but that's just how we establish okay. the board. So in terms of, go ahead. I was going to say, I'll make sure it's on there. All right, no, absolutely, but just and to give you behind the curtains information. And then we have three carryovers from the last board meeting. Uh, two of those were with the foundation agreement mm -hmm. for lifelong and uh, thriving. 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 And then the third one was, technolo was technology. Is that going to be ready for? Yes. All three of those are yes. ready. ready. Okay, so we're, okay. Budget session review, budget review sessions follow up, CCMC? You, you want to talk anything about your visit? Or not? Um, I know you filed our yeah, I, a great report. I went to Arizona last week. It was a very good meeting. I was, Joe was out there, Susan was out there, um, wrote a seven-page report that I distributed. I think at, at the end of the day, what we need to do is discuss it as a group for more than one minute. Um, I think we need to share it. I, I would encourage that Steve and Susan be allowed to share it internally here with CCM employees. At some point in time, we probably ought to share it with members of the public, in, in all opinion. I tried to write it so it could be. I think there's a lot of valuable information in their education. I haven't talked about public stuff with Joe, but I don't think there's anything that he wouldn't be comfortable with. Um, CCMC was a great host. Um, it was good spending three days with Joe, seeing your operations and everything. Very positive meeting. I, I mean, I'll be honest, they exceeded my expectations and very professional organization, so it was a good meeting. Um, I think the real question for this group is, you know, do you want to discuss the report a little? Um, do you agree with sharing it? And what time frame do we want to do this? I think that's the question. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, uh, first of all, it was an extraordinary report. I mean, I, I just want to say, I made a lot of junk. <laughs> yeah, this was better than junk. <laughs> better than junk. No, it, was, it was really well done, and it gave me a, a really good sense of what the meeting has been like. So I appreciate the thoroughness that you did it. Um, I think that kind of report deserves more time to talk about and reflect on and incorporate as we start thinking about how we move forward. You know, we've got several different things coming up here that integrate into all of this. I think this report informs my understanding of how we would go forward with that. And I do think the community ought to see it. I, I, I think the community will be impressed that this board is taking our work seriously enough to do work like this, um, not only the time and the energy to go out there, but just to report on what you've seen and, and what you've heard. And um, I think we ought to 
I think we ought to make that public. And Brian, I have one question on the investment side. Are, they've never made investments outside of the, the, all the CDs or treasuries that I'm aware of. We have that capability? We have that capability, yeah. Okay. I mean, we can I brought that up years ago, and I, I, mean, I think that is important when you look at we as, we as a board are responsible for our investment policy. Um, I think we need some that. I don't honestly think we're – I'm not aware that the board has ever sat around and talked about what our investment policy should be. It probably at some point next year ought to be one, especially if we get to $2.1 from the county. We ought to be sitting around talking about how, how fast we spend money. We're going to talk here in a couple of minutes about three-year budgets and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And to me, that ought to feed into that whole process, how fast we need investment risk do you want to take and how. So I think it would be a good thing for the board to discuss. Yeah, I think we need to. Timing wise for discussing this, um, and it's, this leads to the next agenda item, board workshop scheduled January and February. This is our last scheduled workshop for this year, for December. Mm -hmm. um, what I would like to do, this is a sidebar, I would like to schedule an executive session. So this goes to the roofing piece. When that report comes, we saw the email last week, that their report would be in our hands no later than the 15th? Six December 14th is what the email said. But they hoped it would begin May, by the end of this week, but right. that's not a promise. Mm -hmm. Would that be, well, we had talked about scheduling a time for us to talk about the strategy with that report. Uh, assuming that worst case scenario that it comes in on the on the uh, 14th, uh, would we want to schedule a meeting for the next week? I think you need to check and see who's going to be in town. See if we have. A That's what I'm asking. We have the board meeting on the 17th. Yes. Uh, yes. Can we do the executive session prior to the board meeting? We so can do that. So and I would also just putting that out publicly. Talk about the personnel piece yes. and dovetail those two. Is that too much to do all in one day? Dovetail. The, the, Executive session on personnel with executive session on roofing. I think that's fine. And do those, and would we want to do those on the same day as the board meeting? Do that on that Monday afternoon, the 17th. Sure. Okay. Would that be all right? Is that, oh, does that cause heartburn right before a board meeting? If you want to do it like a two and have a and it would be based on uh, attorney Terry of Angus and Terry's availability for That's, that meeting. That is also well. correct. And we don't need uh, we don't need Tom Slayton for no. that. No. Just for So that gives us enough for next steps. Is that okay? And what time frame? Like four o'clock? Four o'clock. For that, for the roofing part. And let's do the, can we do the personnel before that? So we do three o'clock? Well, I would say, uh, let's meet, let's meet, let's four o'clock for personnel. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we need two hours for personnel. Right. One is one hour with us, and one is another hour with Steve. Or too much. Do you want to start at two? Three. Start at two, two to five? Yeah, yeah, two. That work okay? No. No? I can't, I can't make two. Can't make two? Can we do roofing first? Very much more important. Make three? I can do three, yes. Very clock one. So, <coughs> Paul Terry will not be, I, I need to email him, so when would you like him Call to him be available? Four, how about four o'clock? For the, for the roofing part. Why don't we let him well, come, let tell him the time he can make it, we can do it. We'll break that in half. And then something else that, that might save time, if, if you want to consider this, in the past, um, the board has done the one voice consensus for my evaluation, and then just the president met with me um, at a separate time. So if you don't have enough time to do it all, I'm okay okay, but if it's your prerogative for me to meet with the entire board, I can do that also. Whatever the board would like. You want to communicate? I think it's going to be a function of our time. I just, I, I don't know Let's the answer. See what works for the roofing, and then we'll do some email and schedule the rest. Does that work okay? So that, that, it, it dovetailed into the question of when do we fit years in? Is January too late to talk about that? No. The report? No. So can we schedule that for our first workshop? Keep the same schedule for January and February of workshops? Is that okay? Because mm -hmm. we don't have anything on the website now. Uh, January 7th 
9 30 in the morning that's a monday that's the first and third monday seventh and the 21st first and third well that i work? actually have one on my calendar on uh, january 7th i've kept first. it it's just not on the public calendar uh, on the public <laughs> i did i did the same thing okay i think rachel put them on your calendars yeah. through march well she may put them on our calendar okay yeah yeah, and if you're okay with just leaving them as are, then we'll just go ahead and start loading. Is that okay? Website. We're okay with that? And then the 7th, we'll talk about my report. Okay, good. And the 7th, January 7th. Good. All right. Anything else for quick updates, information? Um, can I ask you a personal privilege so we take a five-minute recess? Yeah, take a five-minute recess, and then we'll move on to the call. Sound good? Cool. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to pause the camera.
We have a witness. I should have taken a picture. <laughs> All right, we are resuming. Next item on the agenda is CCMC strategic focus. I'll turn it over to, to Nicole and Steve, and I don't know if you want to do an introduction or? Uh, I will, I'll introduce. Please. Um, coming to us. Uh, I have ahead. a point oh. just before, can we speak up a little bit? This echo in here is horrible. We're getting yeah. emails yeah. that the streaming audio isn't that great. So. Okay, well let me first, um, before I introduce Nicole, let me say um, I want to uh, commend the staff here and all the volunteers weekend I mean it was just a, a great example of what collaborative efforts look like in this community and to see the the festive events on Friday and Saturday um, and having uh, the team here be flexible and ready to accommodate so that we could get this meeting and get work done I mean these rooms are, are truly magical when you put the right people doing things in them so not only do you have celebration on Friday that raised a lot of money for the foundation, but then you have the governing of the community taking place at the same time. So thank you to the, the team here for putting all this together and getting this all ready. It is a little echoey. It's not perfect, but it works for um, the, the great stuff that we had take place this weekend. Steve, before, before you do that, do we, because this is all going to be positive stuff, do we want to bump up the co covenants planning process and just get that out of the way before we go into this in case anyone has to leave? or? Can we bump any of that up, that discussion? I'm here all day. Because <laughs> this is going to be the whole. I need a light. <laughs> Do you guys mind putting that up? I don't mind. Get around. Okay. That could be a long discussion. Oh, that could be a long discussion? Because it was what Jack had Are shared. Are you guys able to stay? It's what Jack okay. had shared three months ago with. It's very incomplete. Well, it depends how long you want to keep Nicole here, because let's do Nicole. She d probably doesn't have an interest in all the rest of this. Stuff. Let's do Nicole. I think okay. let's just yeah, keep, let's keep with Nicole. That's fine. That's fine. But yeah, and to, and to echo that, um, this room was filled with snowflakes and and frozen snowballs and, and three hundred kids <laughs> and literally the staff. I mean, unbelievable. They transformed it to this within like an hour, and they were helping with every aspect for the community and. So many people just um, came up with wonderful comments, and thank you, because I don't know how you guys handled that last weekend, but it was beautiful. Thank you very much, Paul. I do. They had someone here mopping the floor Saturday night. They threw me out. <laughs> <laughs> you got fired twice, didn't you? I think Brian got fired twice. He was putting everything on sale. <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, then, I will introduce to you Nicole Engelman. She's our Vice President for Communications for CCMC. Uh, and she flew in this morning to help us work a little bit on um, what the next few years and celebration will look like and really getting us focused and staying focused strategically. So I'll turn it over to Nicole. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate the time today and I really look forward to partnering with you as you think a little bit differently and a little bit more long term about strategic planning. Um, so what we'd like to do today, I'll just real briefly um, let you know what our objective is in today. What we'd like to do is just talk about some best practices in strategic planning and take a little bit deeper dive into each of the steps that we've outlined previously as part of that strategic pro process and then um, show you some tools and resources that are available to you um, for your process. And at any time, feel free to jump in, ask questions, make comments. It's an open co conversation. So we just wanted to real briefly talk about the four steps for long-term strategic planning. Um, and we'll go into detail for each of these steps, but broadly, um, step one would be looking at that sustainability study, looking at the processes and procedures um, and structure of your organization uh, to make sure that you have the infrastructure that's needed to support your long-term strategic plans. Uh, number two, looking at an annual community survey and knowing that you have this uh, very extensive uh, parks survey coming up this year, you may want to think about waiting to start your annual community survey process until the following year um, and focusing on that recreation parks and recreation plan for this year. Uh, but we'll show you some tools, and we have identified about seven other communities that are similar in size, scope, and maturity to celebration. That would be great benchmarks for celebration as well. Um, we didn't feel like benchmarking celebration against every other CCMC community was a good uh, benchmark for you. So we have identified seven communities that would be. And Nicole, do you mind if I add to, uh, I mm -hmm. think when it comes to benchmarking, we want to throw some examples out there and show you these seven other communities. 
But I think that as we work through the strategic focus, it's going to be up to the board to determine, do you want to benchmark against yourself? Do all seven make sense? Do four of the seven make sense? It's, it's completely flexible. We're not saying that this is exactly who you have to benchmark against, but we want to just throw some of those out there for you. Throw those options out there. And, and you may even look at other municipal sure. entities, things like that. Um, those are all questions for you to decide as you get further down the road. And then a little bit um, about uh, budgeting, uh, two-year budget process. Brian, I believe you're going to go into a little bit more detail about that. It's a little bit different than what you have done in the past. <coughs> Any questions about that or comments? No? Okay, we'll keep Who's we? Point. I mean, you've used the term we. I mean, are you a team of one? Are you a team of six? I mean, is we, you, and Steve? So how did... So when I talk about framework. we, I speak more uh, CCMC in general and the different teams that we have working together. Uh, so uh, my team is a team of three. We're the communications department. Um, and then we work collaboratively with all of our leaders on site uh, to go through this process, execute the plan. So when I say we, I mean okay. all fine. of us. Our big happy <laughs> CCMC family. And you've done this before at other CCMC communities. We have. Have you done yeah. it two times, nine times, 19 times? Uh, we've been through this process about six times now. Okay. It's a new tool for us, the community survey tool. And as we were launching it, we were starting to um, see what a powerful tool it was for strategic planning as well. And so we took a step back and we thought, well, how is this going to work more as a strategic tool rather than just an annual community survey standalone? And so um, we started refining the process. And to take it a little bit higher view, um, this, uh, what you see here, these four steps, are all a product of, um, last year I watched a video about um, long-term focus in, in strategic planning for celebration as a community, and that was Jackson Mummy's video on where we go into the future, and not just thinking year to year. So I started thinking, how, how do we accomplish that? How do we move in that direction? And I called Nicole, and I talked to Joe, and we kind of put our heads together on what tools does CCMC have available to kind of take all the different things that we're doing here in celebration and combine them into one process, one plan for focus and long-term strategic planning. The reality is your, your strategic plans over the past few years have been one-year business plans. What do we want to accomplish this year? Hmm. We want to break out of that and say, what do we want to accomplish and what does this community look like over the next five years? So that way when you do have turnover every year for the boards, you do have new residents coming in. They have something that they can see of what your vision is and what your strategic focus is moving forward. So to, cl to clarify, um, what you've done six, six times is the annual community survey? We send the annual community survey, the strategy sessions, and the budget work session. The sustainability study is unique to celebration. It's unique because that came out of our initiative, which we put in the CCMC contract for this year. Correct. Right. But it fits okay. in beautifully as it could build on yeah. the next step. Right. And then those, the benchmark of seven are other CCMC communities. They, they are correct. So it's not beyond that that's inventory correct. of communities. Right. Okay. And the reason for that is that's the data we have available to us that okay. we can share. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. No? Okay. So once again, this is a proposed timeline. Um, it starts with uh, this past September with your budget work session and then moving into January which is the proposed time for the sustainability study um, and then moving into March that would be the survey time so this year it would be your uh, recreation and facilities plan uh, survey and then next year you would start the annual community survey the annual community survey would be one single survey a year it would be the exact same survey from one year to the next and that would allow you to compare um, your progress and your trends and apples to apples comparison um, with the same questions over time. And this gives a, this is more of a long term um, timeline. Next year we know that there's a lot of different variables that are coming into play and in how we're putting this together. This is more sustainable as we move into the future. Um, so if January doesn't look like it's doable for a sustainability study, we have the flexibility to say February or March for that. And, and moving the uh, parks needs assessment up to January and February. That's completely flexible. But as you move forward, this timeline makes a lot of sense. I would probably change this timeline definitely because in January and 
February, we're going to be the Parks and Facilities Master Plan. That's going to have a survey. That's going to have community things and stuff like that, which is going to require a lot of commitment. And we're going to be finish, finishing the athletic complex, which we need to do right with a launch date of, let's say, April 1. So to me, the first quarter is really spoken for with a couple of high priority type items so we need to push out post April 1. For um, post April 1 for this, you're talking about the sustainability piece? Uh, sustainability piece, yeah, I think, because um, I think at some point we get, I think we, during this conversation we need to start yeah. talking about sustainability exactly. piece and what exactly is it based on where we're at today we think we want to do. And who's it going to include? Because it may be different audience. Mm. Correct. It may not be residents. Mm. So when these Perfect. surveys come out as an example, how long does it take to get results when they get compiled and That's a great question. So usually what we do is for a community survey, an annual community survey, this survey will be open for approximately two weeks. Um, some communities make that a little bit longer, some make them a little bit shorter. So that's a timeline that would be up to you. Um, and then after that, we would have the results available in a raw data format. And we would take those results and then we would um, roll them up, high level summary, but then we would be able to pull out trends and um, take some different looks at, okay, here are the demographics that are answering this way, here are the demographics that are answering this way, and see those trends as well. And the reason why I ask that is if we have, for this year coming, we have those items going on. But if this is going to be the same time every year, that's also the election time frame, and that's going to give you skewed results, I feel. Um, we do have the annual meeting in March, and then hopefully we can do that town hall kind of a thing, a half year check-in every September around there. So maybe quarter two, between April to, to June, April, May, June, we can look at the survey. I don't know how that, what, what that is. We just want to make sure that we, um, what the, each step that you're doing, while the time frame we want to we want to nail down so that we can actually deliver on it, um, but each step you do builds upon your building a long-term strategic plan. And then that long-term strategic plan helps you drive your budget and then it all just starts repeating itself again. So even if next year we have to modify a little bit because of the uniqueness of some of the things that we're doing next year, um, remember everything that we're doing, the surveys, the sustainability, it all helps you drive what your strategic focus is over the next five years. Right. And the survey tool is really a way to evaluate um, your success in those strategic items and then it gives you an opportunity to amend or shift what you're doing, what your priorities are, depending on your survey results. Yeah, in, in future years, I could see the value of having that survey and that data back as a new board takes uh, their, their office yes. uh, as a direction uh, for that marathon start process and, and say, here's where we're headed. Um, but clearly, it has to happen before you get into the budget process, which just basically locks us down for mm -hmm. know, a couple months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I envision if you've ever been to New York City in Manhattan, you walk out of your hotel and you step into the sidewalk. You can't stand there and decide to plan your day on the sidewalk. It won't work. You'll get run over. <laughs> so the way I see this is when a new board member comes on, the flow is already happening. They're just jumping into the flow and they're working with it. Instead of spending the first six to eight months trying to figure out what's going on, trying to figure out whether it's, it's even working or not working, this really moves the, the um, community in a strategic direction and then new board members come and tweak that direction as they see fit. And the more consistent you are, the more successful you'll be in um, shaping the habits of your residents in terms of responsiveness to surveys, um, understanding the process, things like that. Um, if they get the annual community survey on March 15th every single year, you're going to have a higher response rate over time. You could make an argument, a good argument, for the doing it in the third quarter and then having it to shape your budget stuff. And then what I would like to see us actually focus on as we go forward is changing the whole board orientation. You go to an orientation session before the election is even taken. In the past, or at least when we got it, no one talked about financials. No one talked about governance. There was a lot of things that would be good for mm -hmm. the eight people four people, 14 people running for office to hear so that they got a clue this is what's really involved. As they are deciding to run for office. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and you have this, or not. You have this whole <laughs> governance side, um, setting the vision, setting the direction of where we're going, and then we look at the management side also. And this is key to us staying focused from a management team 
and um, being able to assign goals and objectives to my team. And typically, human behavior is when everybody wants to be successful. So when we know what the, the game plan is, and we know what the rules of the game are, it's easy for us to design our work plans and what our years look like around that. And it gives everybody an opportunity to, to really fire on all cylinders, along with your committees. So Nicole will talk a little bit more about that when she gets into that slide. Right. I mean, I think the, the surveys have been such, and David can speak to this, but we were um, doing them quarterly, and we did get tremendous value. But I think one of the reasons they were successful is we used some short snippets. If we're doing a huge one annual survey, I don't know if our feedback would be as well. And also, we need to look at how much do you want to throw at new board members. I mean, when you guys first came on, I know it was, you know, they're throwing so much at you. Do you want those goals from the beginning, or do you want to be a part of shaping them? I think if we said to you in March, this is what we're doing, it may have been harder than, than having you have some more input or waiting to the fall, or do we do two surveys? I, I, I mean, think I they're, they're great questions, but if I could ask the board to let Nicole go through these slides, and maybe that mm -hmm. will answer that for you, and if not, we can discuss a little mm -hmm. bit further on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and we definitely have some guidelines and best practices around lengths of surveys, how to phrase the questions, um, how to really narrow down on the topics, and many of you took our pre-workshop survey to let us know which areas are most important to measure in an annual survey. So we got that feedback as well. Um, so we'll continue on. So what we've seen in uh, best practices for long-term strategic planning is really a tiered approach. And this um, reinforces uh, exactly the comment earlier about everyone needs to be firing on, all, on the same cylinder so that we just get the most done um, most efficiently and most successfully. Um, so that includes the team, the committees, and the board. Um, so what we look at as really some of the best practices, it's really a tiered approach. Um, we start with a formulated list of questions, not only about uh, the future, the vision, the goals, but also well, is there anything that we're doing now that we're spending time and energy on and money on that maybe we want to stop doing. So it's not only where we're going, but it's also, is there anything that we want to stop doing or do differently? Um, so to start with the team, Steve with his team conducts a strategic workshop with his team with the same list of questions that their information then gets rolled up to the committees. The committees use that information to conduct their strategic planning session all of that information gets boiled up to the board. The board uses that to create their final tier three strategic planning session. Does that make sense? And then the final strategic plan is then shared collaboratively with everyone. And the goals are built from that. There, there's real power and synergy when all entities are working towards the same goals. But you described a bottom-up approach. Mm -hmm. Why is bottom-up better than top-down? And, and, and I'm, so I'll be specific here. Mm -hmm. You got 4,000 households, you got I don't know how many people, you know, are you gonna get any, you know, I consistently hear Steve say, you know, the team, I heard him describe his people as a team, but I consistently hear Steve say, well, we want you to tell us what you want the team to do. So you've described the process where it's going to emerge up. Is that the right way to do this, or do you need a, a reverse process? And I'd like to know what you've learned from these other communities where it's really, okay, a top down, does this make sense, and then a bottom up. So there, it's almost like you can do a 180 up, down, up, down. So that's the question. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and Nicole, do you mind if I, just yeah, from the team sure. perspective, um, wh when you ask the questions, I don't think the team is going to talk about um, as much what the, the focus of the community should be over the next five years. Because it's really, it, we're here to implement your vision of the community. I think you'll get feedback from us on strategic focus of how we accomplish what you're looking for. I think the how is more important from the team perspective. We may see things or hear things though from on the front line that maybe you don't hear um, from residents that are coming in. So we may be able to provide some important feedback from that perspective also. But we won't uh, strictly focus on um, try and impose our will of what the community looks like over the next five years. It's going to be more of the what makes the most sense on how we get it there. Right. And sometimes when you're uh, working at a governance <coughs> level rather than an operational level, 
there's um, maybe a lot of things that are being done that don't necessarily support or um, aren't time well spent towards the longer goals. So those mm -hmm. are some things that can be identified at the team level, and then it gives the committees and then the board some additional insight to work with in terms of, oh, if we're not doing this, and we have more time to spend on this. And it really makes the team feel like a partner. Yes. Uh, I, working I could together. almost see changing the timeline up here to incorporate the parks and facilities master plan first so that you literally start with here's 2019 here's the time frame for the parks and facilities master plan which then almost gives you the big picture goals and, and granted I will uh, there are going to be things that aren't in the parks and facilities mm -hmm. master plan but if the real I've heard Jack say the real goal of this board is to efficiently and wisely spend money and you know that should almost set the framework and then you roll that and then you roll forward yes. and then you can get into the survey timing in the future so that you play out that way right so going back to the timeline that's almost more of a 2020 timeline if we were to spend 2019 on the parks should and be 19 plan. 20 and 21 should be a three-year yes. time frame yes but moving forward into the annual process mm -hmm. yes and um, ultimately I think we can we can tweak here and there to where all parties feel like it's what makes the most sense moving this forward um, we're throwing out the initial suggestions for this I don't think that anyone here is saying that it absolutely has to be done this way we can continue to tweak it to say let's if, if the team worked better doing it first or the team worked better doing it last we can certainly move th make those arrangements and move them right which is which is the kind of the evaluation and amendment um, step which you would use your community survey to do that Any more questions? Or? I just think mm -hmm. that what we need to get away from as a board and the past boards need uh, have dealt with it is the squeaky wheel syndrome in this town um, mm -hmm. where people that think they're the most vocal is the way the board should be voting. And I think that's yeah. has not been good for the town. And I think we need to avoid that and to go with the valid statistical surveys. Uh, but I can't remember the term, but, but I, I think our... I think we need to um, base our decisions more on valid input because you get garbage in, garbage out, and you see that from past history here. In this well, I think it's it's really um, an education of the public and then a culture, and it, it's just cause and effect. I mean, it, if you know as a resident that yelling and screaming and being the loudest voice is going to get you the results that you want, you're going to double down on it. So if we change that culture <coughs> to say, let's have a well thought out process where we're strategically focusing on what we're going to do over the next five years um, and if there's something in year two that comes up that needs to be readdressed then we'll do the evaluation and the amendment but if it's just a, a, someone that's mad and wants to yell and scream we got to stay focused and that's where the discipline comes in to say we plan this out very well new board members should say out of respect to past board members that have planned this out very well um, unless it's a big initiative and we want to look at tweaking we, we're staying focused. We're moving forward to get the highest and best use of our time and the results that we're looking for in this community. Yeah. I and also think, I, I would just say, I think that, that underlying all of this is we're talking about a culture change. We're talking about thinking strategically, planning long term, avoiding what Vaughn was describing with the squeaky wheel, making reactive decisions and being intentional about the decisions we make. So that while it, it, I think this conversation is really important to think about where do these pieces fit together for 2019? I don't want to muddy the waters around the, the facilities and, and recreation master plan. It's a great opportunity on a not even limited scale, but a more focused scale to do exactly what we're talking about here and then segue into this longer term piece. And I think it's okay for us as a board to look at what happens two years hence, three years hence. I think this myopia of we've got to make a decision because we've only got one year on the board uh, is causing this this lurching back and forth that really is a disservice to the community and as we get to our 25th year as we've got some history now and we're starting to think about what the future looks like we, uh, we have an obligation to the community to do this kind of planning so I, I think you can accommo accommodate everything that we're discussing here by a more uh, layered approach of one step in and then move to the next and then move to the next and, and I think we worked through, as we self-discover a little bit more about how this works, we worked through that fine line between planning, which is very important, and analysis paralysis that locks us up and, and keeps us from moving forward. 
And I think we just tweak and modify and we adapt and we just keep going. We keep moving. So is um, CCMC putting together the survey or is the board putting together the survey? Uh, we'll get, get to that in just another slide or two. You're, you're, you're seeing the future here, ahead. Debbie. <laughs> Sorry, <I'm still> <laughs> Roll forward. <laughs> okay, so one of the, um, some of the best surveys that we've seen really are twofold. They are an opportunity to evaluate and amend your strategic plan, but they're also an opportunity for you to educate residents. So when we are talking about, say, covenants, we can actually explain what that entails, what it means before we ask the questions. So it's an opportunity to build in some resident education as well, um, so that you're being very clear about what each topic covers. Does that make sense? And we'll use the results um, to obviously evaluate and amend your plan. And then it's, it's a huge communication tool. Uh, we'll show you some examples once we jump into our survey module of the infographic summaries and things like that that we create for our communities once our annual survey is complete, um, just to easily communicate to their, to their residents, here's what you said, here's what we heard. And then here's the next step with the action. So this year we launched a survey module and we're going to show you a demo of it. Um, really it is a collection of tools for building community surveys. We looked at um, about 24 different community surveys and um, reviewed all of the questions and then we have some other surveys from other industry organizations and things like that. Um, and we put together what we thought were the best questions that would give you some metrics that you could measure up and down over the years and look at trends um, in about 13 different categories. And so it's a great place to start when you're building a community survey, um, not necessarily saying that you don't have room for customization because you certainly do, um, but it's a great place to start. So we'll take a peek in there. You can over time benchmark your results against yourself. You can benchmark against other communities within CCMC um, or if you have other local organizations that counties or um, other government agencies that you'd like to look at as well. log in here. I've got Steve's computer, so I've got his drop off. Okay. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. And everyone <laughs> evacuate the building. Wow. Gee, and I just said the CCMC site was safe. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. There's only three or four people watching at home, so... <laughs> So while you're working on this, can I just yeah. ask a couple of questions? Sure. Would this survey be something that we would design working as we would appoint someone or a group of people to work with management to craft and create this? Correct. So it, it, it's going to, when she gets into this, you're going to see a, a comprehensive database of different questions. And it would be something where either um, during the board we could do a work session and go through them, may bog us down a little bit. You could probably assign two or three that seems to be a little bit more nimble way for us to move quicker. Um, knowing based on conversations of what the board's looking for, and I think Nicole's already initiated that conversation a little bit about what's important for us to survey. Um, but when you see, when she starts uh, demonstrating here, you'll see that there's multiple different types of ways to ask the questions that you want to ask the community. Yeah, I think what I'm asking more is a, is a uh, logistics question. Yes. Does it strike you, David, that, that the way we would do this is appoint a couple of people from the board to liaison with 
management to craft this rather than trying to, to create the survey as a group of seven? So what, what, what sounds like is they have an inventory of survey questions. Right. And so that you can benchmark with other communities, you would have the same questions. And then I also heard that they can be adapted. I mean, it reminds me of when I did something like this y y years ago. Um, I would say, do you want to know about this? Yes. You want to know about this? Yes. You want to know about this? Yes. You want to know about this? Okay, now you have a three-hour survey. Nobody will complete it. <laughs> no. And, and, well, well, I want to know it all. You can't know it all. So it's a matter of prioritizing what do you want to know, what length do you want, does everyone get the same questions? Because the answer doesn't have to be yes. I, I think part of what I'm trying to get so, at but, is but, I don't know that I need to see a demo module to so, understand that there's going to be a survey. But in, but in terms of a process, there may be something that you want to know. You want to know how people respond to covenants or budget integrity or yeah. and, and, this and so we can, we can prioritize. There's ways of doing that that involves the whole board. Um, but I think a subcommittee of a couple would well, be sufficient. We have the priorities of the board that we discuss in strategic planning. We have our broad categories. It strikes me that this is the sort of mechanics that can be managed by a liaison, a couple yeah. of board members couple come people. back and say, here's what we've come up right. with and here's how it fits in. I, I appreciate the, the comprehensiveness of what you want to show us, but personally, I don't think I need to see that there's a survey to understand that there's a survey. Okay. And I, mean, I, I just trust you that, that there will be a survey and it's got questions and right. the questions are good and we'll talk about them and figure out and benchmark them. So I'm perfectly happy with you moving on to the next slide. Okay. Uh, we do want you to know that it is a resource available to you and that was our purpose in got showing it, it to I, well, you. And we brought Nicole out here so I want to make sure that that's the consensus so, so of what the board is, too. That I don't, are these the clusters of questions? Is that what these this is? These are the is? categories. Um, so for example, amenities and facilities. <laughs> You want me to bring your chair up closer? <laughs> Let's roll the TV closer to you. <laughs> and, and we don't need to get into the details of the questions, but just to show you how it works. So there's several questions in each category, and then we'll ab we're able to build our survey. We would start with the topics. We would then go to the question. We would add the educational piece for each topic. Right. And then um, we would also look at open-ended questions, overall satisfaction, likeliness to recommend celebration to a friend. Can you go to lifestyle, see what that is? Sure. So we'll do a media campaign way in advance that this will be coming out, keep reminding people so they know. Don't ignore this and delete it. That's correct. Very similar to the, the facilities master plan that we're going to be doing here yeah. early next year. And then you decide who is the appropriate respondent. Is it every resident or is it every homeowner? I mean, those are and I think with our Friday Flash, it's based on that you live here. Well, there, there's, JR um, reminded me again, there's some span laws out there. So yeah. people have to opt in to Friday Flash. Right. We do have a GenArc database of emails. If people opt to give us those, that we we have the ability to communicate through that. So what was, what was under Lifestyle? I'm sorry. This is going to be oh. similar to programming, recreation, things like that. Did you want to look at each one of these questions? Or? So when, so something like this, when, like in our community, do they know, does our community know the term lifestyle? And that would, yes, that would be one of the items we would customize. We would probably change that to recreation. And then you would compare it to other communities that use the term lifestyle, and then that becomes a methodological right. issue of and it, it, comparability it, it, or right. not. It all goes to what's important, strategic focus. Um, how do we find out if what do you folks safety, are, are safety happy and security. with it? Yeah. What, do we find out how folks are happy with what we're offering that's important? And then how do we benchmark that against either ourselves, against other communities? And then what are our key performance indicators? What shows us that we're successful? Nicole, would it be possible to email this off to the board so we can review it as an example? Is that um, okay? Steve does have access to this. Okay. Um, if you wanted to just look at the questions. So we can all just, because it looks like it's a, a lengthy document, so that way we can all run, run through it and, and like get our own brainstorming yeah. going on. How, how many and questions are there? Today. How many Ball, questions ballpark. are available? <coughs> yeah, ballpark. Uh, what's, your large, what's your inventory? There's probably 150. Okay. And an average community, when you, well, in the communities, what, how many do they typically ask? Uh, typically it's around 15. 15. Mm -hmm. 15 questions Correct. total. So samples from multiple categories. So that can be one from safety and security, two from lifestyle, mm -hmm. 
et cetera. Is there opportunities for comments? These. Yes, we always have an open-ended comment box at the end. Um, typically, we see that it's a little bit, um, it's typically more constructive to announce, to look at the comments separate from the actual data. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we just add one open-ended question at the end. Okay. At the end of the whole survey or at the end of a cluster of questions? At the end of the whole survey. So, okay. Not to, and I don't know, you might be going into this, but you mentioned seven communities before. I'm actually most interested in that to see what communities you're putting celebration kind of Those seven. similar pool as. Yeah. Um, are there any that are like tourist communities? That's or the kind of stuff I'd like to. There actually are. Size, scope, scope, and maturity is what you said. Yes. I would say the closest, um, the closest benchmark, the best benchmark for you is probably Daybreak Utah. Is where? Sure Daybreak? Daybreak Utah. Daybreak Utah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the. Did the community manager come out here? Yes. You did. You got to meet her. Yeah. I mean, we're I think you did. Ours is so unique as we're a community next to a theme park, and we have some some very um, it's very unique, 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 unique issues. issues. Yeah. Is there? I it's mean, is there unique. anything close to that? Okay. And there's no uh, next, next to, to California. <laughs> Not that I found. <laughs> you know, it's it's um, we it's do. We have unique. some very unique challenges. That's really the beauty of this community, though, is that you can um, you can determine. You know, and are there some areas where we're just benchmarking against ourselves, where we're saying, here's where we're at now, but here's where we think we can certainly go. Um, but if you want to look at just strictly by size of communities, here's what Daybreak Utah has to offer. If you want to look at um, geography, we could probably find another one in another area of the country what that's are, more similar. What are the other six? We were also looking at, um, I'll just let you know the other things that we looked at. Uh, we looked at the complexity of the governance structure, uh, the park system, how intricate it was. Um, and then also the, um, the maturity, the size of households, and the size of the staff. Okay. And when you say governance structure, is there any other community that's as crazy as this governance structure? Because I think we, we pretty much have to take. <laughs> you mean from a, a, a CROA, Kanoa, CJC standpoint? I mean, yeah, as even as people that, that, you know, Charles Adams, that my, my one question to him was someone that formed the community through the Disney in the years was, what would be the one thing you'd change? And he said, the governance structure. It's not working, it's, it's a mess, and it's really created um, hardships with, yeah. with neighbors against neighbors and yeah. um, within the county. So I don't want to replicate that if we're looking at another community, but is there anything that's close? Yes, there's two communities that have a council structure um, in addition to the Residential Homeowners Association Board and then a commercial uh, association as well. Which ones? Um, so those are Daybreak okay. and Estrella. Estrella? Estrella, Arizona. Okay. Um, the others that we looked at were Valley Ranch in Dallas, Texas, and we also looked at Craig Ranch, which is in McKinney, Texas. Yeah. Um, we looked at Greyhawk. Um, Greyhawk has a simpler governance structure, but still a very intricate park system, and it's mixed use, and the number of households is similar. Um, let's see, I can pull up all the other ones too. So we had Greyhawk, we had Estrella, we had Valley Ranch, Craig Ranch, Today Break. Um, so we're missing two. I'll get those for you. I have and them right and here. these kind of fall in line with, with the um, my, my um, training and onboarding plan in 2014, I, I, CCMC sent me to pretty much every one of these communities. I think uh, Craig Ranch is the only one that I haven't seen out of this list. And spend, I spent some significant time there. I spent two or three days at each one of these communities. So the can I just ask, yes. since Joe is here, um, and since you've got familiarity with CCMC projects in the southeast, do any of the CCMC projects and communities strike you as being Comparable in any way? So, so you wouldn't include watercolor uh, as a. And, and the reason I'm asking is to Debbie's question about vacation and tourists and. Uh, number of, of permanent residents. And, I mean, there are obviously big size differences, but there's a lot of complexity here. And I, I guess the question is ultimately, it, are the communities that you're picking good benchmarks for certain things but not for others? Do you want to look at some of these communities for very specific pieces that we wouldn't get elsewhere? All of the communities you've mentioned so far are not vacation communities, to my knowledge. Correct. Uh, so I think there are some aspects of this that might be different. 
And there's something else. You said there's about 150 questions and an average survey is 15? To 20. Mm -hmm. 15 to 20. So how many of those are universal? In other words, if you're talking about a benchmark, you might be benchmarking against one question. Because we may, we may pick 20 questions um, that no one else is picking. So there's no benchmarking except against ourselves. That's right. And, and so how many are uni pretty universal? And each community goes through the same process that you're going Understood. through here. Yeah. And so each each one is customized. You're correct. So how many are cut across those seven? We do recommend some benchmarking questions. So you'll see some of the questions are in bold. Oh, that's what bold meant. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. But it's our choice. So, so it's really a question of does it really matter who these communities are if we're not benchmarking against them? Right. Or if we think that we benchmark, but we don't think it's appropriate. And are we gaining the data? Or no disrespect, or no. is the management company gaining the data? Yeah, uh, uh, but uh, is there anything useful for us? And those are all, those are all questions you'll need to explore, certainly. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you get further down the process. The other two communities, uh, just for your reference, were Power Ranch in Gilbert, Arizona, and Desert Mountain, which is in Cave Creek. Yeah. I think one thing you do gain under this approach, though, is uh, we've done surveys with Dave and um, Debbie, but Debbie's fallen off the board. Dave will at some point in the future. You may have people who aren't surveying experts in the future. If CCMC does this process and you do it annually for a decade, your worst case scenario is you got a decade of good data from your own mm -hmm. surveys. That's correct. Which is actually probably the most powerful information you'll find. Yep. And would all of this data remain uh, proprietary information to celebration? Yes. yes. But but could other communities benchmark against this? Right, but the actual survey data remains proprietary right. to us, so that if it because uh, I think to Brian's point, you're you're creating an institutional history that outlasts any board, uh, but it should be uh, specific to celebration. Re remain with celebration and not be data that could be sold or disseminated in some way by a management company. Correct. Which we don't do that at all with any of our okay. So but No, but, but to clarify that, if we're benchmarking against Greyhawk or Desert Mountain, do we see that they had a 4.2 on a certain question? You would see an average. So if you chose, say you felt like three out of those seven were good benchmarks for you. You would see the average scores for those. Scores. We never see Greyhawk or Desert Mountain or Correct. Daybreak. You see an average. And so the, the, the reverse is also true. Nobody would ever yeah. see Celebration. Yeah. But then separately, you talked about raw data. So the raw data is downloadable that we could yes. actually slice and dice our own way. Correct. Because all of that would be available to you through your survey tool, whichever tool you Like an Excel file or? Correct. SPSS file. Survey tool mean, meaning Survey Monkey or yes. Constant Contact or whatever. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Survey Monkey is going to give you the most um, fle flexible raw data to analyze. Yeah, it's yeah. Excel. It comes out as a, or CSV file. Yes. All right, any other questions on that? No? And then to show you real quick, we also um, have several other suggestions and results, um, sharing tips, um, things that you can wrap up into an infographic. These are all things that your community, uh, we can help your community with. Uh, rolling up your data into an infographic that can be easily shared with homeowners so they see what the results were. Um, and then you can also include action items as well based on the results. Any questions on that? In these communities that you've worked with, Nicole, yes. have they been as active in surveys as Celebration has been up to this point? You know, it's it's interesting because um, we have a handful of sur uh, communities that have been conducting annual community surveys for several years now. Um, most of our communities were doing more anecdotal surveys. Um, so we are seeing a trend now that they are doing a lot less of that and moving towards an annual community survey because they feel like it enhances our strategic planning process. Yeah, I think what I'm, what I'm getting at here is that over the last couple of years at least, certainly in, in David's uh, and Debbie's tenure, uh, we've become survey heavy in, in this community. We've done quarterly surveys, and that is pretty unusual for a community our size. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. 
So our community already understands what surveys are. They understand that they're going to be asked questions. They understand there's going to be feedback from those surveys. Um, and so it strikes me that an annual survey, in some respects, may be an easier transition, simply because we've already got a, 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 a residents who get it and understand yes. it versus a group that had never seen it before and had to build in. So, yes. Does that seem? Yeah, and I actually think you'll get a better response rate because people won't be so weary of oh, another survey, right? Um, so. I know, or it was pretty consistent, but we kept it short. I, I know me, when I get the real long ones, I'm like, oh, I'll yeah. come back to it later, and I, I typically One don't. to three topics. Yeah. yeah. You'd be surprised. We, the response rates are fairly high for the annual community surveys. Sure, sure. What's yeah. the percentage roughly? Um, it's anywhere from 60 to up to 80% wow. response rate. Yeah. They're for high. For community or uh, recipients? For a community. Wow. Yeah. When they're just doing an annual community survey. Yeah. That's impressive. That's now it's a very consistent survey. It comes out exactly the same time every year. It's open for the exact amount of time. It's publicized in the exact same way. So it's really building that habit around it for the residents. And then the residents are able to see their results in are action. These, are these newer communities? They're more established. Yeah. Yeah. And I, when I was, don't think when we're was the first a hard time getting a survey mentality around this. I mean, yeah. I don't think that's mm. a big deal. Not when was the first one of those? Uh, the first annual community mm. survey that we did was probably Five years ago, six Five years, years ago. okay. Yeah. Any other questions on that? Talk a bit about the sure. Um, the sustainability study is is driven through the management contract here, and I know it's um, something that uh, the board has assigned Jackson to be the liaison. So I'd rather let Jackson go ahead and talk a little bit about it here at this slide. Okay. Um, we have had several meetings uh, to try and find a vendor, uh, someone who would be able to do a sustainability study for us, um, in anticipation of a couple of things. One is that there would be at some point an RFP. Um, when the current contract with CCMC ends. Um, we looked at a couple of different approaches to this. One approach was to go an academic route and find uh, a liaison, a relationship uh, with uh, an educational uh, facility that could look at our governance structure, our uh, best practices, and figure out what we're doing that should be sustained. That's why we, we moved the, the thinking, you remember, from an audit of you know, we're mm -hmm. auditing the way management works to a sustainability study. Um, then, and, and we met with uh, University of Central Florida, uh, with Dr. David Mitchell, uh, and, and we sent that proposal to all the board members. Um, and we had several meetings with Dr. Mitchell. Uh, I think he brings a, a unique structure of both some city experience, government experience, and an academic uh, platform. And HOA experience. And HOA experience, yeah. personal HOA experience. Then um, the board asked us to look at uh, other options for how to, to do this. And with Susan Kern's help, um, I looked into several of the companies that do audits, mostly management audits. What we discovered is that most of those companies are made up of, uh, if Joe Cook decides to retire because he wins the lottery at an early age and he's a happy guy, and he says, you know what, I still have to do something and get out of the house, I'm gonna become a management consultant. And now Joe shows up and he says, I wanna do an audit of your company. That would be great if Joe won the lottery, but if Joe still needed to feed his family, Joe's audit is basically, hey, you know what, your management company kinda sucks. And here's how I could do it better, and this would be a great <laughs> opportunity to bring my management company in to take over for your management company. And, and I have to say to my fellow board members, I'm just not ready to go down that road again. I, I really don't want to have those discussions. And in my initial inquiries with the people that said they were management consultants, what came through very clearly, very quickly was, and we'd love to bid on management when the RFP comes up. Jack, you're nodding your head. I know you went down this road before, and, and Brian, you may have experienced some of this too. It's very frustrating. I'm afraid that what we're trying to do here, and Nicole, you can speak to this, I don't find any 
precedent anywhere else. I don't know any other community doing this. Yeah. Let me, I've, I mean, I was part of the team with Jackson, and my thoughts have evolved on this. We sent me to Arizona. We're going to talk about it in early January. Um, and, and I agree, the initial genesis out of this was, okay, if we wanted to do a request for proposal, could we? And the last, we were, some of us heard in meetings in, in, during the last year that, you know, we couldn't even do a request for proposal because we don't know what they do, th they being CCMC. Steve politely told me that was bullshit. Um, they know what they do, and they've got wonderful documentation that he showed us. We sent me to Arizona. I've, I've written a report on Arizona, and Arizona is solid. So, and we know what Arizona does. It does HR, it does accounting, it does accounts receivable pay and all that type of stuff. So if we ever looked at an RFP, you could literally use my report and a mm -hmm. couple of things there, and you could say, okay, you got to replicate this. Can somebody do it better or worse? Probably, in my opinion, probably not better. Could do they do it worse, or can they at least do it? There's probably a couple options out there, and that's probably it. Period. So then you're down to when we talk to um, uh, to the UCF guy. There were two things in there actually. There was the sustainability piece, which was other softy feely stuff because he said we're going where no one's ever went before. There was another piece called performance metrics, which Steve was actually interested in. And the performance metrics actually dealt with, and it was about $11,000, and it dealt with some of the local things here like how well do you manage the parks and some of that stuff, and it was based upon an interview with the staff. So to me, if we want to go down this path, I would almost take my report more thoroughly vetted amongst the board to get comfort there. And if we want to do the performance metrics, then you talk about some of the other pieces that are specific to right here in Celebration <laughs> and this team, and that was going to be a Q&A session and some stuff like that to just say, it's really good, or here's a couple of recommendations for enhancement. So I, I have evolved on yeah. this subject. And, and as I've seen what Nicole has put together, and Steve has shown me some of this and these different pieces, I want to go back to something Brian said earlier about first quarter and all of the things that are going on. It strikes me that if we, if we have too many initiatives happening simultaneously, we tend to dilute the value of all of them. And so the performance metrics is something that can happen behind the scenes that doesn't bring community members in to ask right. them their opinions right. and things. It's also a good way to dip our toe in the water. I, I want to emphasize to the board, there isn't there isn't a model for this. If I'm wrong, tell me. But there isn't a comp there isn't a community that I found. And I asked Brent Harrington a couple of weeks ago when he was here, is there anybody doing this? And he said, nope, nobody. So when we look at that, I would be happy to see us take that interim step, get our get our relationship started with UCF. And I, I want to make this point. Having an, a relationship with a university in the community that's academic rather than business related is a very important step to the maturity of our community. It means we move into more of a governance setting. We're bringing in academics to help us understand what we're doing, to build the relationship, to develop the community. I wish that that would have happened with Stetson, you know, 20 years ago. That wasn't part of their interest and in their plan. But UCF is interested. And I think as a research institution, which is what UCF is, we should take advantage of their skills and resources. They're going to build bigger programs. They're going to bring more resources in. And I think over the long term, that gives us viability to come back to them in multiple years later and say, hey, let's look at this again. And then if we want to add the sustainability pieces, they've got a better understanding of our community. So I would very much like to see us move forward even today to authorize the performance metrics piece of this study. Mm -hmm. I cannot find, and I. I offer this to any other board member that wants to do it. I cannot find another vendor who is willing to do that in the same way. Everything else I've seen is a audit of the management company with the underlying assumption that we will change management companies. Jackson, I would agree with what you're saying as far as the metrics. Um, I am strongly against involvement with UCF only because every any single person on our board is probably more qualified than all three of those individuals put together because you have one individual who's the lead who managed or who is a treasurer on an association that was one fourth our size. Right. That's his background. The other one has been in Lithuania for three years and the other one is a, is a master's degree candidate. I just don't see where they're 
$25,000 of them is gonna give us a single thing. If you wanted to go to CAI and use their expertise, which I don't know how you're gonna get because that's the same issue you're gonna get, well, we'd like to manage your community. I don't, I, I don't know where we're gonna go on this one that we're gonna really justify our $25,000 expenditure. Well, it's part of the reason I'm asking for an $11,000 expenditure to start with. I want to be clear about that. Mm -hmm. I have I have confidence in, in Dr. Mitchell. I, I agree that he doesn't have an HOA. He's not been a president of an HOA board. He hasn't done those things. We can find that expertise, obviously. We've got a lot of that expertise right here. I would love to see us then bring together a group of, uh, you know, maybe ex-board members, past board members, emeritus board members, to meet with um, the group and, and to see those studies. I want the academic neutrality that comes in that we just can't get anywhere else. And we've checked at other universities, we just can't find it. So, um, yeah, and a piece of background where Dr. Mitchell came from, I used my network in public administration and community work and found nothing yeah. and ended up with him just by reaching out to the local university. Yeah. That, that was it. I mean, I, yeah. I, it's the same problem I, went, I went national and could not find anything. That was my problem as well. I tried so, to replicate So it, it really doesn't exist. I mean, the, the, yeah. the expertise doesn't exist, and so this is transferable knowledge, transferable skills. Yeah. Uh, and I think his expertise will be helpful. And again, you were talking about the, the 11-8, uh, 11,800 yeah. uh, proposal for that piece and it I, I like your terms dipping your toes in the water let's test it out it's it's uh, can be very helpful to us uh, not a great expense it's a modest expense uh, but it's let's test it out and see what we can learn from it and I I don't if, think we can lose if Jack's right and it's not it's not great and they're not all that confident well we've made bigger mistakes than, than that one and we still learn something along the way. It also buys us some time to do these other pieces that Nicole's talking about and begin to integrate them. I think it's got a relatively small downside risk for us yeah. and some potential for a big upside over time. Not, in, not immediately, I mean, I wanna be clear. We're not gonna see a big jump in no. performance because we've done this, but I think we are gonna get some data, some metrics that help blend with the other pieces that we're talking about. If we are gonna go down this path, I'd like to wait a little longer into next year. Steve needs to run the Parks and Facilities Master Plan. And other people on his staff need to support him by taking other stuff off his plate. So, you know, if that's gonna take till March 15th, then let's do the performance metrics in April. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, I would just like us to, to get it off our plate in terms of making a decision and deciding that we're going to authorize it, even if we authorize it now for April 15th. I'd like to be able to know that so that we can lock in uh, get into their time. And get into their schedule. And get into their schedule. There's, there is some with this? question about that. I, the performance matrix, I think, would um, line up well with doing your annual survey because it'll give you an idea of what's, what's important and what you can measure. And I think, again, from the management side, that works well. So you're talking about really doing your annual survey later in 2019 and, and developing that for 2020. So anything after April for this makes a lot of sense because the new facility's open. <coughs> you've gone through the facilities master plan and you've done this year's, or 2019's technical community-wide survey. So the timing makes sense um, sometime after April. May 1, did you say? May 1 sounds great. Yeah, I mean, it gives us opportunity to finish all, all the first quarter projects, and so and then this lines up with kind of fitting into the overall timeline. I would table this decision until later on. Maybe we'll change our minds down the road to think do we need to make a decision on. It's really more about scheduling, Vaughn. Yeah. Well, all right, we can we can agree on May first, but yeah. I don't know about agreeing on a contract yet. Do we need to agree on a contract now? Well, I would encourage us to do that. Is there a reason not to? Is there a reason to do it now? Well, I think there are a couple of reasons. One is we need to get under contract with UCF to get onto their schedule. That's the, the first priority. The second is that we can use some of that time between now and May to begin to integrate and bring them <laughs> on board with the other pieces that we're doing so that it's not a complete, you know, from zero to, to rushing start. I'd like to be able to see what they're doing. I am personally convinced that there's that waiting isn't going to change anything there isn't any white knight sitting out there no pun intended there's no knight of any color sitting out there 
uh, that's going to be able to come in and do this particular kind of work. So unless we don't want the study, if we don't want the study, we should say we don't want the study. But if we do want the study, I think we should go ahead and authorize the study and then decide what the time frame is and, and that. I'm perfectly comfortable with the smaller scope of the study. Mm -hmm. I think that's correct. Um, you know, if, if you're feeling there's a reason we shouldn't do it, I, I want to hear that for sure. I don't have a reason for not doing it. I just don't know why we need to vote on money right now to be spent next May. That's all. It's more of a matter of getting you have to get it on a calendar. On, on they, they needed, they, when we met with them, they needed four to six months lead time. That's really the issue that's you're driving. I didn't hear that part. Yeah, that, that, that's I just the said that. Four to six months? You say four so much, we can't, we can't take it all in Jackson sometime. It's just you know, so much. Really? Okay, fine. Four to six months? Yeah, yeah. Because they've got to pull together the, the staff and the team and the students and, and move their, their scheduling around. So and summer may be a good time for them. If it's a May 1st start, that Ooh. may be a good time. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I just wonder if there's a gain out of this that's going to exceed the expense. That's what I'm questioning. Well, you want to speak to that for just a second? Well, uh, um, when, you, when you know the rules of the game, when the management team knows that this is how we're going to be scored, just like in, in football, you know how many points you get for a touchdown versus a field goal versus a, 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 a two-point conversion. When we know what we're being measured on, and we can capture it, and we can determine what, what success looks like, that's an, a, a value, I think, that that adds a value to how you govern overall and what you're going to tell us you think is very important, and then how I manage my team. When we met previously, Steve was a big proponent of performance metrics, which he'd like to see consistently done into the future so that you can measure the performance and the sustainability. He was willing to do what the board mm -hmm. told him he needed to do. But performance metrics was actually Steve's idea been. that had value to him, and I think it then complements what we ha did with Arizona. I agree with Jack's comment earlier. Me going to Arizona was a much cheaper yeah. option of satisfying yeah. our requirements. Well, I've struggled at best to get um, something in the board report that the, the board can look at and say, yeah, that gives me a real good understanding of how successful we are out in the community. And I think that having an academic level um, study done to help us determine what those important measurements are is beneficial to us overall. Um, you know, in, in the past, we've thrown together some facility rental hours, some um, amount of people that have registered for programs, uh, just the ARC, how many applications you're getting, but those don't seem to be of, of a lot of value to you and how you make your decisions. So I think that this could be a good process for us how overall. How would this four to six month uh, lead time impact what Steve's got to deal with on the the study that we're going to do with Nicole. Well, we're Here's picking after. that time frame after. exactly because it's after. After. But but I, why does he need the lead time in order to do UCF. what? I'm sorry. UCF. It's, it's UCF. UCF. It's it's UCF. UCF. It's UCF. So it's not him as a private vendor. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. It's no, no. UCF university. team. So the university is right. the contract. Is who we, we are contracting with, with UCF. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I think is a little bit intriguing about this is that they, they've self admitted that their public administration from a a, a municipality, county type government level. Um, they, they haven't done a lot of this in HOA and there's really no, no classes. Like if Susan and I, when we were in high school, decided we wanted to be in community association management, we couldn't go to college for that. You just kind of fall into this career. So <laughs> it's kind of interesting to me to, to see from a public administration standpoint what kind of best practices can be utilized. And I worked for government for 15 years, so I think that Doc, uh, David Mitchell and I will have some really good conversations on what we've seen successful in government versus what works really well in HOA. And, and this really could become a model that mm -hmm. helps other HOAs throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. And that, that's me dreaming big, but I think that it's very overall reasonable. being able to look at it from that perspective, I think that it, it helps us out. I, I don't like the idea of spending a lot of time going through each document and explaining what it means. I think that that's not highest and best use of our time, but to go through a process of What's important? What should we be measuring? How should we be measuring that? I think that's a win for this community. And I think it's also an opportunity to establish that relationship with UCF for the future, for wherever that might be. We just want free tickets. Jackson. Do you want to make a motion, Jackson? You want to? Yeah, I, I move that we approve the uh, performance metrics part of Dr. Mitchell's study at $11,600. 11 8, 8. 8. 8. I'm sorry. 
number. And do you want to put a date in there? <laughs> with an effective date of May, with roughly May, date, May, roughly 1st. May 1st. I mean, the contract may be before, but the start date of their work. Right. Yeah. I'll second. That was a second from Vaughn? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? Ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. And Thank you. Jackson Thank you, will Jackson. be responsible for coordinating with yeah. Dr. Mitchell and rolling forward. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you, Brian. And what a great foundation no. for your, your other steps. That's a great foundation for your other steps. I, th I think it will be very rich for us as a community in multiple ways, some of which we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the great part of leadership, isn't it? Sometimes you have to go it's exciting. into the unknown. Leave it's exciting. You know. If you're right, can you get us royalties? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, you, when, when, you retire, <laughs> when we retire. We'll, we'll jump. <laughs> Brian, it's, back, you it's back to you. Okay. Brian, you want to talk about two-year budgeting? Um, we've talked about two-year budgeting before, so I'll make this quick and light of town. Um, bottom line is our financials are strong. You know, we do monthly updates of actual. Um, I think the, the number process, you know, big done annually is really just not something we have to do. I don't think we um, should be looking backwards. I think we should be looking forward. So let's roll forward one slide. Um, I, what I, you know, I think we already got a budget format. We played with the budget format this year. Everybody liked it. It would be, it, you know, I set up here a three-year projection is doable. Um, with my Excel skills, I could probably build this in one day. And in all honesty, what we would do, you know, you don't want to look, you probably look at it every July 1 and January 1. Steve and I talked about it. And it would be easy to go through. Island Village is rolling on. What are the assumptions there? What are our assumptions? Inflation assumptions. How do we think about the HOA at 2% versus other number? You could easily, quickly get this down to a few pages that you distribute in advance. You're looking at three years out. Certainly, you want to look at your working capital fund, your replacement reserves, and that type of stuff. But we could, as a board, be sitting here and look at your financial health over a three-year period. I, I think it would be pretty easy. And what you're really, it, it doesn't totally replace your annual budget. Obviously, annually, you, you want to look at it and ask some more detailed questions. But I think it'll make it smoother and faster. I think it's easier to do when it's almost like taking a temperature. You know, if your temperature is 98.6 and you've looked at this every six months, you're going to feel good about yourself. And if you're running a fever or you're freezing to death, you want something to, to highlight that in advance, which this could certainly do. I, I think this is a discipline once built that's very easy to roll forward with. And you like this idea of the three-year model? To you could do two years. You can do three years. I think three. I actually think three years would be the interesting model for us yeah. because of Island Village. Because Island Village, the financing around there, the working capital fund, stuff like that, we're going to have a new plan. We're going to get hit. I mean, this is Brian Kitzel only speaking. You know, if we end up spending a million dollars in the next 16 months taking care of everybody's nits and nats with pickleball and this and that, then you, you may start a, okay, then we're going to take care of these eight items, and then we're really going to save money for a community center. And when we'd be rolling it out, so looking a more, little more into the future would be a smart thing to do. And, would, and, we, and it, would we need to put this into the charter revisions in your view, is this something that has to be formalized, or is this just a practice of the board? I consider this good governance. Okay. What, we have, to, what we have to do is we, we are responsible for looking at our current balance sheet, our current income statement. Um, I think probably the fact that we don't have an investment policy is a bad thing. I think we should have an investment policy. Debbie and I were talking about that earlier. It, it, that, that is an imprudent, intelligent thing to do. This is good governance, good management. You know, I guess part of my, my interest is there will come a day when we are just distant memories in people's minds, and they'll say, what were they thinking about? What did they want to do? I, I would like to make sure that there's, in addition to this record that we're keeping, that there's also some sense of why we were doing this and that it, it becomes more institutionalized so that future boards would have the same impetus to continue to do that. So, Well, yeah. I'll add a little bit to that then. I think. Um, Homeowner board members come in and they don't always have a, a budgeting background or a budgeting expertise. And I think that um, homeowners, I, I know that all homeowners that run for the board that are volunteering their time to look at the, 
the governance and the vision of celebration moving forward, you're not getting paid for that. We have to remind our residents that over and over again, this is a volunteer position, um, that you want to do what's best for the community ultimately. And everybody has a different way of what they think is best for the community. I've been through budget sessions where I've been, where we've spent an hour talking about a thousand dollar line item. That is not highest and best use of your time governing this community. This sets you up from a more strategic focus level where you're saying, look, there's three or four big pools of money that we can really play with to affect change and assessments. But overall, most of the stuff is pretty similar. So a two or three year budget cycle makes sense. And once we know the strategic focus, we can move it in that direction. Yeah, and I, I mean, I just uh, voice that I do agree with Jackson. There's not a lot of institutional knowledge we're taking forward from board to board to board. And it does create such a waste of time with new people coming in and recreating and recreating. Um, and I think the board, if there's a way to uh, take more control of that, it may be good because um, otherwise, as you're bringing everybody in, it's just, I see us reinventing the wheel four years straight and it's been exhausting. Well then, we've sat here, Nicole's give us a presentation, we've looked at a timeline, we've looked at strategic planning. I mean, I don't think we ought to do it around just the two or three year cycle then. We ought to talk about, okay, this is how we as a board want to set up a protocol for how strategic planning should be thought about in the future. And this two or three year cycle mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. just part of an overall strategic planning right. format. So uh, to me, if we're going to to me, the right thing to do is we ought to be sitting around in early January talking about a timeline. We've alluded to different pieces of a timeline today, but we ought to be talking about a two or three year timeline of some of the big picture type items, what we want to do financially, we lay it out. And then if you want to do a whereas type thing, or we've already got a finance committee, I think, or a finance something or another, we could structure it into the finance session and uh, Susan does a couple of pages, we could even throw some stuff in there or something. But it, we can more formulated, I still think we've got to have another conversation probably in January about, okay, how do we want the real structure of this to look? And then maybe when the candidates get ready to run, we tell them this is what we're looking at. Yeah, I would really like to see us bring everybody that's announced uh, as a candidate uh, to strongly encourage beyond all the other things that happened that they come to that particular workshop where we begin to discuss in a more uh, interactive dialogue here's where we're headed, here's the long-term planning, the structure of the season, the scheduling. Um, I think the faster we get all of those candidates up to speed, then it avoids the, the trying to drink from a water hose problem that we had this year. Well, it's like, the, to me, there's like the large strategic goals, and then in terms of the board, what is the role? What, are, what, are, what do we define as our role, and what is obligated to us? Well, it's hard power and soft power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's some things that are, are ex, uh, that are, if you will, legislated to us, yeah. not just from our charter, but from state, from the state. Yeah. Uh, but then our charter, and then what do we define as our own role? <coughs> and I think in, in some sort of briefing, uh, whether that's to the candidates in a semi-formal way, in a structured way, may be helpful. Information uh, session. Oh, for, we, uh, you do that. Information session. Sure, for we do. And, and I think it also comes down to what's your level of service that you're looking for. I, I, when you have your briefing session, I was actually thinking some of us ought to be there. I was going to just volunteer to come and do the financials. Always invited the board to come yeah, um, to those sessions. So I think people would learn a lot. Yeah, I would, I would love to be. But we could definitely um, set it up to where maybe board members are doing different portions of that presentation. Yeah. Awesome. I think one of the things that I like about what's happening here, there's a synergy that we're getting with management. You know, I, I, I want to go back for just a second. One of the, the challenges that we faced coming in as new board members was the perception in the community that it was us versus them. It's, it's mm -hmm. the, the homeowners and the board versus management. We're not always going to agree with management, but at the end of the day, we're all on the same team and we're all on the same side. And we're all trying to do something that's good. We're trying to help our neighbors. Um, I'm encouraged, really encouraged by, and I said this when you first presented the idea of having Nicole come out here, that this is an opportunity to take the expertise that you have corporately and make it available to us, that, that lets us see how we can find more ways to do our work better and to improve our community. And so this dovetails so nicely, in my view, with everything else we're trying to do, with the, the recreation master plan, with the surveying that, that's been done for a couple of years, with the idea of sustainability and performance metrics, 
with the idea of budgeting for a long term and over a long period of time. This is what it strikes me that the, the management board relationship at its best can look like. Because now it's not, oh, you dumb, you know, whoever, uh, you know, you're trying to screw us. And I think that part of what happens is that it takes your institutional memory and it matches it with our view as homeowners. Instead of saying, we don't know anything and you know everything and therefore we give up on all of it. And so I, I really think this is, a, this is an inflection point for us that we can look at and say, you know what, we're, we're changing a culture when we do mm -hmm. this. And so I, I just really appreciate it. I know we didn't let you say very much. <laughs> Welcome to celebration. <laughs> I think one step further to that, as you continue grow, going down this path of long-term strategic focusing, um, other governing entities in town learn from that, and it really does change the culture of the entire community. And I think you start seeing a lot more collaboration, and we're seeing a lot of it right now, and it feels good. Just feeling the energy of people working together and different entities working together, it, it feels like we're moving in the right direction, and the results will come from it. You know, we'll, we'll see a new athletic field complex pretty soon. We'll see a um, parks facilities master plan and whatever new amenities come along with that. That's the beauty of what we're trying to do. It's, um, the noise is always going to be there. We'll never get rid of it. But we're, we're the leaders. We can look past the noise and we can get to the results for the community. Any questions for us? No, I mean, I, I, I love the fact that we're talking about um, taking first things first with the key point indicators, understanding those, getting our arms around those, and then taking the next step, getting through the parks first, um, allowing the energy that needs to be dedicated to that and the responsiveness from the community that needs to, needs to happen to make that successful to do that first. Then with um, the next thing, starting on the key point indicators, getting that study done so that we have the foundation that we need going into the following year to really start the strategic, long-term strategic planning process that can exist really for generations to come. I don't know about gener. That's good, but I don't know about <laughs> generations. At that point, it doesn't matter which one of us wins the lottery. Years, next person maybe years mentality. to come. I'm not sure generations. Uh, I can't even see the screen. <laughs> She's a communication like a person, resolution. remember? <laughs> a resolution for a celebration 100. <laughs> yeah, who's going to hang out? Thank you very much for inviting oh, me Thank you. Oh, thank thank you, you, you for putting this together Thanks and for, for being here. Absolutely. Can we, can I make a proposal? Can we do the management consult or the uh, covenants finding process as the first item in our January um, workshop with oh, the second item being Arizona? Oh, oh we have. Okay, gotcha, sorry. Let me just get through this. Let me discuss this thing. Yeah. This has been snow where it's not covenants finding process. What we're dealing with is a the appeals process where several people got on the board and said, well, we don't want to pay, we want to find somebody $50,000 and we're not going to find them zero. It was trying to find a structure that, that gave us an idea of where we should be as far as months, years, whatever the person was in the finding process, and where we felt comfortable with. It's, it's got nothing to do with the covenant's finding process. And from a management yeah. standpoint, when I look at, without having clear defined KPIs at this point in time, but when I look at success rate from the departments, the covenant's department's doing really well. And it's yes. a tough department because you, a lot of times you have to say no to people. And I'm getting zero complaints about our covenants process. Um, I know that it doesn't mean that it's perfect, that there's always opportunity for to tweak it, but if you try and jam it into a 10-minute conversation, I don't know if you're going to give it the justice that it deserves. Right now, it's not a broken wheel. I think the finding process, I think it's doing a good job. I just think what Jack was saying, the appeals process on the fines, how do you, you make it equitable? in different situations when people come. We're talking about the Board of Appeals. On how much you're going to allow. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. I'm talking about the Board of Appeals. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you get one person that's asking to go from 10,000 to zero, and you give them zero, and the next person have a very similar situation, and you're giving them 100, what's the consistency there right. on what you're exactly. doing? Exactly. Well, what we're just looking yeah. for is a guideline, and not necessarily the actual fine that would occur. Right. That, that's still got to be meted out by the Thank board. You. Yes. Yeah, and, and, it, and it was also this this board had a different philosophy on handling appeals than yes. prior boards. Yes. 
So what do we need to do to accomplish whatever it is we need to accomplish? That's, I guess, my question. Well, first of all, let me uh, in, inform the board that the Covenants Committee has been doing uh, its own research in the process, the process and timelines and how things are working through. We are proposing to come to you probably in the next workshop to show you what we have found hmm. in a 12-month study. It's been very intensive with management. They have been very Get closer. Get very they have been very helpful in providing it and it's been the synergy between management and the committee itself it's going to show process internal to ourselves so that's going to be one of the things that we're going to bring to you hopefully in the next workshop the question having to do with the appeals process the issue with that is is that the appeals process exists after you know first of all you have made a decision to, you, you've reached a point of where a violation has taken place. We've gone through the process. You've made a decision to fine. It's then directed to the committee to then review that with management to see if there's been any corrective actions. Right. And then that committee then reviews what's then presented. What are the facts that we see as of the day of that hearing? A lot of those things that we have been doing, though, within the last year or time frame, is that, say, a particular homeowner has 10 items. They've got nine and a half done. Mm -hmm. Instead of just draconianly say, you didn't meet the timeline or whatever, we have in, instituted the use of parliamentary procedures. We have tabled for the next meeting. A lot of times, I don't have a statistic to tell you, but the item gets corrected. Mm -hmm. Again, it's communications of what we've been working with, with the homeowners. And in doing so, my objective, when I was asked to there to first be on the, on the committee, was to improve the relationship between CROA and be it our homeowners, the association, okay? We work for the homeowners. And it was to improve the appearance, the upkeep of, of the properties. It was not meant to be a finding process. It was not meant to be a revenue generation. And so, and in doing so, I think we've moved away from that. And we have improved with communication, and I think we've improved appearance or upkeep of properties. That's, a, that's our objective. When we reach to a point of where, and it has been very rare, that we have approved or instituted passing back to you to institute a fine. Mm -hmm. The process though is the fact that management comes back and asks for a recommendation back to the committee chair or vice chair to what we feel that we think that we feel the committee that we need to recover all of the administrative costs mm -hmm. that have been in incurred by management and by the committee as to a certain dollar rate per hour as that we've you know we've had to go out and inspect and reinspect and paperwork and and do all that's a given the issue with that is is then there needs to be some type of a level though of I, I don't want to use the word punitive but we had punitive is probably the right word but the issue that we have here is is that we changed that in how we were doing things, the discussion in the committee to instead of going with every individual thing, $100 per incident per day, that's why you were seeing mm -hmm. fifty to $70,000 fines mm -hmm. as to what was going on. We categorized those down into six categories. I can't right. cite them directly off the, as to what those are. Right. And in doing so, it limited the scope, but it got the attention of the homeowners. They worked them off. The fines have been much lower. We have homeowners that doesn't matter how we communicate. Management has even gone so far, I, I've known Tony to actually go and ring a doorbell 
besides a phone call, an email, a letter, or whatever to work with them. We have homeowners that don't want to work with us, and that's at the point of where we have to then resolve to do something. In what was presented years ago as a matrix, as something as a guideline, it's, it's what was presented as an idea, but currently right now it doesn't fit within those six categories of what we have tried to simplify things. And the discussion internal to the committee was, let's just stay in what was the decisions of the finding process of what is legislated by statute, $100 a day per item, as to, and that was the decision of the board, instead of let's, you know, looking to see, and the committee doesn't want to become, an, you know, an accounting process as to a mailbox is $5, numbers, or yeah. It sounds like this is a solution looking for a, a problem. <laughs> That's correct. Okay. And, and again, what, and our presentation to you hopefully in the next workshop is to show you where we have some recommendations, but believe it or not, management has already, they, they, they've, adopted them even though that they saw that it was an opportunity of oh we, we saw some things and to improve and I think that's a, that's where we're at right now. so would this be a good for January 7th I think is our workshop date is that's something you think you'll be ready for yes okay. I think that what we're doing is we're, we're pulling in the last data okay as to to put into this thing and we would like to keep it rather condensed and, and so we just can show you how the process is working and how, you know as to violations as they're seen how long does it take to follow up how long does the second letter go out and how long in the process yeah. and then how we work through that thing so and Steve you're not seeing a need for a matrix finding process at this time no we Thank you. Okay. we myself and I do and I, I'm speaking for the committee at this point we just we do not see one yeah. And, it's been and some I appreciate time that. I think the more we can work together and the more that, yeah. that you communicate with the residents, which is what yeah, we, we haven't had an appeal in four months, four months, months, which, four which, four which to me months. is a key performance yeah. indicator yeah. that yeah. things seem we to have be working coming up in the next week or week yeah. after. Yeah. 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 I mean, but, but I think I think this is a I think this is really a wonderful way of recognizing that what you're talking about with communication and improving communication. I know Vaughn was on the Covenants Committee for a long time. That that's actually working. And yeah. the fact that we have so few appeals and so little really in the way of problems that ultimately have to come to us right. means that, that generally things are going right. I think, you know, when that, when that uh, guideline was, was first proposed, it, it was a different world in terms of problems that we faced. And so now, you know, let's not, let's not overly complicate the matter. I think we've... I think as a Board of Appeals, we've done a good job in the few cases we've had of recognizing where someone needed uh, some grace and where sometimes we had to be punitive to make the point. Um, and, and I'm comfortable. I mean, I, there were no, mm -hmm. they were all unanimous votes. I, right. I didn't think there was any difficulty at yeah. all in reaching a consensus. And so, so I, I will, what is interesting and what we'll find and management can tell you is that as the Board sees a number and it says this is the number of cases that and this is the other thing that we'd like to change in the terminology the issue as we see is it's violations we need to change the thought process of it becomes a case file the case file becomes the time of when we see something start hmm. and it works it's all the way through the process and there's a closure point and that closure point is either the action item is closed because they've made a corrective issue and you know, if the house is painted or there's repairs or, or we fix something or there is a fine but the, the item is still not closed it's not closed until the corrective action is mm -hmm. is then done and then this case file has to be archived because there have been cases situations of where we have repeat offenders that we can go back and pull the previous case, and that, I, I have to say, does influence the committee 
or it would, should influence the board as they say, we've seen this before, and this is what's, you know, this has happened last year or the year prior or whatever. And then that will change or influence if we get to a punitive situation. The, the, my last point is that uh, inspection email, inspection or letter, go to second letter, get to a third letter. When the third letter goes out, I would say we have corrective actions of 90% of the things when they say there's going to be a hearing and it's going to be discussing fining. And most of those things, we, you will find that people are out there, you know, they, they either walk in with an mm -hmm. ARC application, I want to paint, replace mm -hmm. my roof, I have a contract in hand, or I have whatever, and the communication is solid between management and in doing it. So we've made significant progress in, in doing things, but we have, we still have a great deal of room for improvement, and that's, that's all that we're trying to do. So, Mr. Anderson, that, just real quick before you, um, I have to. St I've, I had a commitment to meet a homeowner on site at noon, so I have to excuse myself. I'm going to leave Susan to do that. Um, but if there's anything else, you all need. I think to we're do. closer. We're going to cover this in January. Yes. We'll cover this and the you, follow on on the budget. So it sounds so, like really so January thank you, Steve. Be further education. Yes. Okay. Good. And you're still doing the monthly articles, and yes, that's helpful. Okay. And well, thank you. yeah, I'll save that for the website. All right, any further, anything else? I'm going to move to adjourn. Any second? Thank you, Tabby. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Thank you all. See you. See you in our, we have multiple concerts in the next week. <laughs> Wednesday and then Foundation doing one Friday and then the Celebration Chorus on Sunday. Thank you all.